Hello and welcome to another live stream. Now for this one I've decided to pick Semicom as the topic we're going to cover. In recent streams I've done a Seta and Sega and I figured, you know, why not go with something a bit more obscure? I mean, Semicom uh, is a company that's quite close to me in the sense that pretty much everything in MAME that's by Semicom I've had a hand in emulating, for, right from, you know, Hyper Pac-Man the 68020 games like a Barry on Fine Assault, and even the video hardware emulation for the later Hyperstone ones, Wyvern Wings and uh, Cool Mini Game. So, yeah, I think there, there isn't a single Semicom game in MAME where there isn't some of my code running behind the scenes to get it emulated, or where I haven't put in a, a lot of work to actually get it to get them running, usually extracting protection data um, after identifying the hardware type they're on. So, yeah, it was one of those things that, one of the one of the times I realised that Korean games did sort of run on cloned hardware, you know, with their own changes, but uh, essentially cloned hardware. So, for example, Twinkle that you can see in the corner right now is uh, running on pretty much cloned Snow Brothers hardware. So, yeah, this uh, Twinkle is the sequel to Hyper Pac-Man that's been talked about in the chat. But anyway, uh, let me see who is in the chat and say a big hello to everybody. So, first in was No Joe Toe saying Semicom, heck yeah. And yes, as I say, Semicom is one that's close to me. Then we've got Mitchell waving hi. We've got the Ogre just popping by who can't stay, but I'm sure we'll be doing our timestamps later because the Ogre is very helpful like that and has done all the recent timestamps on the videos, which means you get those nice little things in the... the um, Bar if you're watching later so you can skip to the part you want. And we've got Mo Burma, we've got another regular Bob Loblaw, and the, yep, there's no final lap today, Bob. Uh, don't tell Cow, but uh, no final lap. Uh, scroll down, scroll down. 
everybody chatting them t- between themselves. We've got a Smedis 2, and we've got Carlo, who does not like Semicom games, because Carlo feels they're all rip-offs of uh, other games with no originality. And um, the, the Ogre thinks that uh, 3K subscribers must co- cost a lot. Um, if people were paying me to, <laughs> to do this, uh, maybe, but, um, you know, the only payment is the um, Super Chat, I think, if people do want to drop any donations but i don't really ask for them it's just you know if people feel like doing that they can extreme wreck is here who look appears to be looking forward to seeing some semicom and uh, i don't know if we're covering all the semicom games today but there aren't that many but they might take a little while we've got uh, thomas and gustardo and we've got alpha so yes it's good to see you all and many regulars here so again we're building up a nice little community here and that's what i want to see really so so we're just going to start with twinkle which is the game I'm running right now. So uh, let's turn the volume for a little bit. These are all quite loud. Um, I did notice they do clip a little bit. We might have to reduce the volume at some point in main. But uh, anyway, let's change our view to the horizontal one. Let's full screen it. 1997 Semicom Twinkle. Let's coin it up. Very, that will be, become a very familiar coin up sound. That uh, little jingle there. Oh, and let's crash straight into a ghost. Now, as you can see, this is a Pac Man like game. This one's not got Pac Man in the title because um, I don't think Namco were too happy with that because Semicom's original game of this type was called Hyper Pac Man, but then they never used the Pac Man name again. So I have a feeling that uh, words may have been exchanged back then. Although I've never actually seen proof of that. But, um, oh yeah, maybe I should have collected the fruit for some bonuses, but um, it's okay, isn't it? Yes, they did. They made a pseudo Pac-Man style soccer game, Mr. Kicker Extreme Wreck, which is one of my favourites, actually, one we'll be looking at. Now, you see there's lots of power-ups for time, and you get these hidden blocks, you know, the shaded ones, and uh, if you've got the laser and you're at least a square back, you can shoot the blocks to... Um, reveal what's inside them. It works a bit like um, Raiders 5. So you can't shoot blocks if you're right next to them, but you can shoot them from a tile away. So there's a slight puzzle element there. Now unlike the original Hyper Pac-Man, uh, Twinkle here does tell you how long you've got left on your laser, so it's the bar counted down at the side of the screen there. But, uh, and obviously this is going to have secret passages. You see, I don't know where they all are, but there's a secret one there. This will, the bomb will blow up things and show us where everything is. Got no lasers left. I've got a helmet at the moment, which gives me the ability to get hit by an enemy and not die entirely. See, those are the passages that are marked now because I, I've got the glasses to see through them. Now, what we've got down here. See, that auto clears the level if you pick that one up. Which, if you're going for score, might not be quite what you want. So, yeah, there's this one. It's a bit of a maze. You shoot your way through. If you can find where you can go. Ooh, can't go that way. There's some one-way passages here. And I ran out of time. So that was a bonus stage. Where you've got to try and you know, work your way around the maze. Find what, where the passages are and where they aren't. So, you see, it tells me now I've got a jump. So it's a bit, got a bit um, pack mania like with the jump. Now, one of the interesting things to note is, while this came in out in 97, the original Hyper Pac-Man did come out a year before um, Namco put out the um, Namco Classics with the remade Pac-Man. So, Semicom did kind of beat um, Namco to the punch with a modernised 2D Pac-Man game. This one, you can tell there's been some more influences from said um, classic, cole- uh, classic collection because it's got all these bouncing pellets and that was one of the things you really noticed with the Namco Classic Collection. So Semicom did integrate that into this game. Although you can turn it off with a dip switch. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a shame that these Korean developers never really come forward to give interviews or anything like that. But yes, it would be interesting to know some of the thought processes that went on. Obviously, they're all quite low-budget games. Um, and you can see that throughout the programming in many of them, for example. A lot, lots of the time the dip switch menus are incomplete or, you know, for a different game entirely. But 
Yeah, I, I wish I knew where the, uh, the secret passage to get to the bomb was. Um, well, maybe I have to shoot it uh, if I got a laser helmet. Unfortunately, I just died. Uh -huh. I was too busy trying to find the secrets and not spending enough time actually trying to complete the level. Yeah, unlike proper Pac-Man game, the individ the you know the ghosts don't really have their own personality here. They they just uh, move backwards and forwards, and you know they're not trying to corner you in the clever ways that Pac-Man may go so. I'm doing quite badly here. Yeah, it's got a, a bit of more of a puzzle element, with the, like you say, with the fake walls, Bob. And yeah, obviously, Semicom had a lot of fun making these games. They clearly liked their games, and um, I mean, you can say it doesn't look as good as an original Namco game or anything else, but when you consider what they were working with, and when you consider the output on home systems around uh, the mid 90s, a lot of it wasn't this good itself. So, I, while these career games sometimes have a bad reputation, I think they're pretty good quality. For, for, you know, budget arcade games. There we go. I can get the glasses now. I can see all the shortcuts. Which is really useful. More than you would imagine. It means I can dodge things much more easily. Just got to be careful not to be um, silly. And lose it. Oh, I'm running out of time now. I've been trying to take too long to do the level. Haha. <laughs> The time limits are quite uh, quite strict on this one. It might be one of the dip switches that makes that a bit easier, but um, yeah, by default, you can't mess around too long on these levels because you will fail. So, want the glasses? Yep. I'm gonna get up here out of the way. Now, the enemies don't go in the secret passages, which you can use to your advantage. You know, you can hide in them if you know where they are. So now I can shoot. But to shoot that way, you see, this is where, to shoot that way, I've got to go up there. Although now my helmet's run out. I can get another one. And I'm out of time. And now I don't have a helmet. You see, if I managed to shoot all the way down there, I would have been able to get that uh, level skip clear thing. Hummer Team and Super Game, the only other bootleg game developers you can think of that might have made them out of passion. Yeah, there's definitely some of the Hummer stuff that um, is impressive. You know, they clearly put a lot of effort in, even if the games are very, very average most of the time. Look, little teleporters. Uh, helps if I don't just die, though. Now, one thing this game doesn't have, that Hyper Pac-Man does have, is uh, bosses. I mean, I don't know... If you consider that a big loss, but it really doesn't, and Hyper Pac Man did. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you've not got the power ups because you've used them up, some of the levels can be become a little bit uh, coin eaters. Here we go, different theme. How do we get to where the TNT is? I think so. Oh, there's a teleport down there, of course. Why would we not use the teleporter? Get out of here again. Seventeen seconds. Come on. Get out of my way. Out of my way. Out of my way. Oh. I'm going to lose the time. It's spent too long. All the developers in the NES bootleg scene knew each other, uh, Smedis. That really doesn't surprise me. Oh, there's an extra life there if I know how to get it. It might be another way you need to get the bomb or some... In fact, there's lots of extra lives. Um, what's the strategy here? Or are they just teasing me? There must be some way to get those extra lives. Maybe there's not. Maybe they're just evil. Maybe it's just, you know, 
taunting me with... Oh, 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 that would have been it. If I'd, if I'd got a laser thing there, I could have probably shot left, shot right, shot up a bit, and made some um, made some passages to those bonus lives. But I did not. Oh, let's get out of that. Eat those, eat you, eat everything. Eat all this lot. Get those in there. And I've got to go. Now how do I get in there? There we go. There we go. And you see, there was a clear level thing there. I could have blasted through the wall down there. Sorry, I don't know why I pointed at the screen. You can't see that. So, there are quite a few extra lives lying around on these levels. But uh, it's knowing how to get them. Which... I don't. But then again, there's a teleporter. I could probably need to get to the teleporter over there. Somehow blasting through a wall to get to that one. And this one, say, this one's got those skip level things if I can get to it and blast it. A bit slow down. Oh, there we go. There we go. Anyway, um, I need to read back on the chat a little bit, I think. I see you mentioned Codemasters. Codemasters is one of my favourite developers back in the day. But, um, the sneaky extra life there if you know how to get it. <laughs> Again, it's uh, it's teasing if you don't know how to get it. But, uh, how long have we been on this one? We've been on this one about 15 minutes, so... We don't need to be on this one too much longer. There we go. Nice fast level, this turbo speed. Not that that makes it easier. Maybe it does. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I didn't get all the bonus items. Yeah, Extreme Rex talking a lot about bootleg developers, uh, which is probably interesting to read. I mean, I've done I've done a lot of stuff um, with bootleg games, bootleg NES type stuff in, in Maine recently. So it is kind of um, fascinating in its own little way. Oh, 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 no, 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 okay. Lost that. Let's find the way up there. The way up there is through here, isn't it? I just can't remember how to get. Oh, it's up there. Pop a little maze, this one. Yeah, so I so say this is Twinkle, which is. Um, oh, dear, let me do it. The sequel. There is meant to be a Twinkle 2, but the Twinkle 2 has never been found. Which is a little disappointing. So there's an extra life hidden there as well, if I could have got it. So plenty of lives on offer on this game, if you know how to get them. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're talking unlicensed... I mean, EA stuff was unlicensed on the Mega Drive at first. Uh, you know, companies just not wanting to pay the ridiculous fees that the... Uh, you know, Nintendo and Sega were trying to charge just to have games on the console. Because they, they come from a background where that wasn't necessary, that didn't happen. You know? The great thing about uh, you know the UK industry and why we didn't have any of the crash that America had is because the developer could you know self-publish all the time. How many semi-com games would I declare lost? Um, let me pause and just bring up my list. In fact, let me let me quit the game now because uh, no, no, not quit. Just actually, let me just show you one thing. Dip switch. You can turn the pellet animations off. So now they don't bounce. Now it looks more like hyper pattern. I think this gets rid of some of the slowdown, so it's a bit of a trade-off, but obviously it looks better when bouncing. But uh, Lost Semicom Games. Now, um, yeah, there's an article on Hardcore Gaming, A History of Korean Gaming, that has a Semicom section, so we're going to quickly look over that. So, giving you information, first amusement, which is related to Semicom, their president, Yu sang Kyun, and uh, the Semicom the president, the CEO, was... a uh, John Jayen. I, I'm going to pronounce these incorrectly. But yeah, we're looking at some first amusement and chill, um, or jail stuff. And we'll be looking at Semicom games. So Final Tetris, we've got that. Brixian, we've got that. Metal Saver, we've got that. I don't know if these PC-based ones are dumped in any capacity. 
um, but they're online games, I think, or network games, so I don't know. I have no idea about those. I can't tell you anything about them. Chocky Chocky, yeah, that's dumped. All four baseball games are dumped. Hatch Catch is dumped. Now, this is one that I would like to see. Uh, obviously, you've got the Cooking BB series, which has got uh, three entries. Uh, but there's a fourth one, R&B, which is apparently Retty and Bloomy, and that is lost. I'm assuming that, based on the visuals, is either on the 68020 platform or the Hyperstone platform, but I don't know. Uh, hey, Robert, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So that one is currently lost, and that's why there's only this grayscale photo. Uh, Hyper Pac-Man, we've got Twinkle. We've got Twinkle 2, you see, 1998. There's, again, there's grayscale photos from materials. It looks a lot like the previous games, but there's clearly a two on the title screen there. Again, that may be on 68-20 or Hyperstone platforms. Carketball we've got. Topping Rappy we've got. Cute Fighters, SD Fighters we've got. Move on to page two. This uh, card game we've got. Might look at that in a bit. Wonder Dunk. This is a missing one. Uh, basketball game. I mean, there aren't many sports games. But, yeah, a Korean basketball game where apparently you can keep people in the face. Uh, so this one we've never seen. That's never shown up. Puzzle Break, we've got two sets of that. BC Stories dumped. As you can see, most of these are emulation screenshots. Apparently there was a PC version of BC Story. Jumping Pams. Now, this isn't dumb. This looks remarkably like the um, F2 system game, though. But, uh, the F2 system games... Uh, I can't remember the titles off right now, but they're on Hyperstone hardware, so I'm wondering if this was a reworked licensed version of one of those. Uh, Pusha Pusha and um, something with jump, jump in the title, jumping in the title. Barry and Future Assaults Dumped. Uh, this one, which is actually just called 3 and 1. XESS is the um, developer name. The Date Quiz Go Go games are dumped. Uh, more and more games are dumped. Guy, this is an interesting one. The horizontal version is dumped, but there is a vertical version. We do know... Um, we do know somebody with the vertical version, but it's not been dumped yet. Um, hey, Scorp, says W. Um, the site's a useful reference. I mean, if you don't like the owner, I don't like the redesign of the site, but a lot of people put a lot of work into the actual articles here. So if we can just focus on the person's articles rather than... Um, the site owner, if you're not keen on the site owner. But, you know, somebody put a lot of work into these. I don't know if it's the same person. But anyways, so yeah, there's a missing version of Gaia, but we do know somebody with it. Part three, Load Quest. Um, Load Quest is an old title for uh, Dreamworld. Dreamworld is dumped. L the Load Quest title version is not. Uh, Rolling Crush, we've got two versions of that dumped. This one, Goal, 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 is not dumped. A semicom exit. I wonder if this is going to be a mini game collection like some of the other ones. But the problem with Goal 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 is there's a Neo Geo game called Goal Goal Goal, and Goal 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 is a very generic term. So if you're trying to search for a PCB of Goal Goal Goal, you're going to get the Neo Geo game from Visco, and you're just going to get football stuff. So that one I'm hoping turns up, but a bit risky. A bit risky. Uh, this one's dumped. Machelu, although there's meant to be an English version called, uh, what's it called? Arirang or something? Now, let me just check. Uh, yeah, Arirang. Uh, the version that's dumped seems to have a bug in one of the mini games that makes it unplayable, so I'm wondering if the undumped English version might fix that, because I'm pretty sure it's not an emulation glitch, it's a bug in the game. Cool mini game collection, we've got dumped version of that. We've got an Italian version of that, which may or may not have been official, but it, it, it's dumped. Toyland Adventures dumped. Diet Family's dumped. Wyvern and Wings, we've got both versions with the Y and the I dumped. Uh, Mr. Kicker, we've got two versions of that dumped. Uh, Redemption Machines, we've not got this one dumped. I don't know where this screenshot comes from. Maybe the Semicon website. We've got Final Godari dumped. We've not got Choice 3 Joker's Dream dumped. I imagine Semicon put out a lot of other um, gambling games too because they could kind of moved on to gambling games after a while. So you get the idea. Most of the games are dumped, but there's still a fair few that are missing, not dumped, never been found, alt versions that uh, need to be uh, need to be found. Load Quest is a bit like Load Runner, yeah, it's Dreamworld. We'll probably look at it in a bit. No Johto. Is there a diagonal version of it, Gala? No, there's there's uh, there's no Zaxxon like version of Extreme Rec. Anyway, now we can close that site and we can go back to our horizontal view. And um what shall we look at? Let's have a look at Gaia, actually. Not the best shooter semi-com put out. 
But I think the vertical version of this would play a lot better. No, not that Gaia. Uh, that's a different game. Gaia, the last choice of Earth. Semicon mess. Now, this one's on the, runs on the 68020 based hardware. Which of these are immature or any? I don't believe any are, Bob. I think all these Semicon games are family friendly. Um, EA didn't really develop their own BIOS, Carlo. I think they just worked out what the uh, Sega BIOS was looking for and put it in the cartridges. The original Mega Drive didn't have any kind of security check, but the later one looked for a Sega string and things like that in the cartridge ROM, which is why the early ones don't work on the models with the protection. Um, but, you know, that was deemed legal. Anyway, this, say, this is a shooter. And the problem is you can tell it's meant to be a vertical shooter that has been cramped into a horizontal screen. Because it's got this option, it's got this um, dip switch option, lock vertical scroll. I'm going to turn it off. I'm just going to give myself some more lives. And turning off allows the screen to scroll as you move up and down, which is really off-putting, but... You kind of need it, otherwise you're getting shot by things you can't see. But it just ends up looking like it's scrolling backwards. Let's credit up. Now, the weakest thing on this is maybe also the sound design. Very generic um, select screen. Let's go with the Korean plane. Um, I think all regions eventually got the lockout, Bob. But you see, as I move up the screen, oh, it scrolls up and scrolls down as I move back. But yeah, this awful music is correct. This is how the board sounds. Unfortunately, it's quite a, a downgrade compared to some of the semicom hardware. But uh, yeah, this... this uh, the game is clearly designed to be a vertical game. The bullets move quite quickly and come from too close if you cramped into a horizontal screen like this. So I don't know why they did this and released it as a horizontal game as well as a vertical game. Maybe they just felt there were more horizontal cabinets out there, but it's uh, it doesn't help it. Unfortunately, this is one of the weaker Semicom games. It's funny to think they also released Wyvern Wings about the same time, which is a much, much better game. The All Systems Go sample is from Einhand uh, on the PlayStation. That doesn't surprise me. So let's continue. But yeah, the music's barely audible, and it's barely music. It's it's nasty. I don't know what they thought. Because the, the thing is, a lot of earlier Semicom games used proper Yamaha chips and, and FM synth sounds. This just uses badly looped samples like it's some cheap bootleg. It's um, disappointing. You can see the whole was scrolling as I'm moving up and down. So... I'm going to turn the scroll lock on then and reset. Yeah, I need to play Iron Hand a bit. Um, <laughs> I might do some other bootleg streams, no Johto. I might do. I don't know. Anyway, now I've turned the vertical scroll lock on. And it, it's a little less jarring to play now. You know, I can move up and down the screen without it changing the scroll rate. The disadvantage is now, I can get shot by things I can't even see. And I can also shoot things I can't even see. Because there's an entire area off the top of the screen that the game is still calculating. Well, at least I can dodge things now without moving around and seeing the bullets wobble all over the place. See, it's much more playable like this, but it's still not ideal by a long shot. But we will play it for a little bit. As you can see, I'm finding it much more easy to avoid things now because they, they move in straight lines. It's 
no, it's, it's no good trying to dodge things if the trajectory is changing as you're moving. Which is what happens if you've got that scroll, scroll lock turned off. Now a lot of um, Saturn ports and PlayStation ports of vertical shooters do suffer from the same problem. They either try and cramp the screen or you, they give you that sort of auto scroll mechanism that really doesn't work. I still managed to die there. This is a shame because in some senses there is a solid shooting game engine here. And that's why I think the vertical version of this might be a lot more fun. Sorry if I'm missing anything in the chat. Yeah, I think and Andre, they probably made this version because there are more horizontal cabinets out there. Uh, I think, you know, they, they're selling them for people to convert cabinets. And they probably realised there's a bigger market for selling this version than a vertical version. But it is a really bad version. I do hope that um, Showtime does get the vertical version dumped because he, he does have it. Although it might require me to extract the protection data again because like all the Semicom games, there's an MCU that uh, copies data into RAM and start up all the year 68k and 68020 ones at least. The Hyperstone ones don't do that, they have their own system of some sort of protection. But the, uh, all these ones do, and since it's quite a different version of the game, there is no guarantee the protection data will be the same. Some of the MCUs have been decapped. Um, and yeah, they literally just copy some code into RAM, there's nothing else to they do. The best shooter is the exploration kind of extreme deck. Um, it depends what you like, I guess. I mean, I do really like Fantasy Zone, for example, and that sort of free roaming, not really do your own thing, but you get a choice of what you kill in what order. Yeah, this. See, the, the, this is a 68020 game. It throws plenty of bullets around. It's got some good animations. Decent bullet patterns at times, but it's still lacking in polish and especially the sound design, especially that scrolling thing. Now, what I've heard is the. Uh, the vertical version does unfortunately scroll from side to side instead, which is still a little bit irritating, but not as irritating as, you know, the, this without the scroll lock on. So, I don't know. Maybe they just didn't know what they wanted to make. <laughs> and ended up making a shooter that doesn't fit quite either pattern. I like the way your bullets curve that, but I should pay more attention to avoiding these than my bullets. But, you know, homing bullets that curve nicely is always a good sign. I think it keeps your score on continue, which uh, is never a good thing in a shooter. Not even adding a, an extra one to the end of my score by the looks of it. In fact, I don't think the last digit of the score matters at all here. I think everything is worth at least 10 points, maybe even 50 points. It always seems to go up in 50s. <laughs> Sorry if I'm missing lots of the chat. Um, maybe I should... Um, Scroll back over the chat a little bit. Now, Semicon weren't the only company to try and do games that ran horizontal and vertical. Afaga did the same, although their games don't really have the whole scrolling thing, they just distort the image depending on which version you're playing. Which probably looks even worse, but you know, there's no there's no easy way to make a game that is both horizontal and vertical, especially if you want it to be balanced and fun. See, plenty going on, plenty of explosions, not too much slowdown. So, I think there's a competent, competent game engine in all this. Yes, real life, blurry satellite photos. It probably is a real satellite photo. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if it's Korea, because Korea like to reference Korea all over the place. So, if anybody can find this location on Google Maps, please put it in the comments. Void Raiders by Brandon Enterprise is one of the few shooters you can think of that fits the description. Okay, I've never played that one, Extreme Back. And, um. 
No Joe Toe sucks at shooters. I suck at shooters too. I kind of like the art. I can understand the, the depth of the gameplay mechanics and see what's good in them. But yeah, I suck at them too, as you probably realised. Again, you, got, you can tell it's a Semicom game just from the credit sound. I think every Semicom game that has sampled sound uses that credit sound. Yeah, I, I mean, Wyvern Ways is an interesting one because it feels so close to a Psycho video system game and uses a different sound system. So I'm wondering if that was externally developed or something. It, it, it doesn't feel very like, like a Semicom game. Okay, obviously this does have some similarities to Psycho and video systems patterns too, so maybe? But they'd also put out a barrier for this, which is a, a more solid experience, a proper vertical shooter. We'll play a little bit of this. I don't think I've ever actually got all the way through this. I've never played to the end from memory. But you know, this isn't even doing any fancy effects. Barrier's got line scroll effects all over the place and all sorts of fancy stuff going on. This is quite plain. Not really utilising the uh, background hardware properly. Yeah, Salamander 2 has horizontal and vertical sections. Obviously it didn't rotate the monitor, that would be quite funky. I've never seen an arcade machine that rotates the monitor in real time. Uh, though, that's an idea. Maybe they should do a Salamander 3 where it rotates the monitor as you switch between the stages, that'd be cool. Uh, shall we put one more credit in this? We're on 40 minutes almost. So, yeah, I'm trying to do about 20 minutes a game, so... Oh dear. Now there's some, lots of bullets on the screen. So we'll play until actually 40 minutes, and then we'll... We'll move on. You can hear the terrible music a little bit. You have lasers. Not laser wheels. <laughs> I was trying to go through them. But you do have that attack too. If you hold down the button. Oh, no, you press. I know. Is it the third button? I'm not sure. I'm just messing with the buttons now. I don't have anything there. So you can, yeah, you can change your option position with the third button. So again, it's a nice touch. You can have them spin around you, follow you, fixed in place. And you can hold down for the charge shot. I, I keep forgetting to do that. But if you've got options, these look like space turtles or something. Big long missiles here. Again, they're well animated. Plenty of angles for them. This pre-rendered stuff, but I've seen worse. Uh, it's a... again, this is where you can tell it's meant to be a vertical game because that final attack, the uh, the ship was barely on the screen. Sixty-nine percent shooting percentage. So stage five is an icy stage. You get the idea. Gaia, the last choice of Earth. Um, and not my first choice of Semicon games to play. So, anyway, let me just have a look at the chat, because I know there's been a lot of chat messages here, because it, it seems to be quite busy. Um, so, hold on while I just go through the chat. Um, right, yes, so, let me just read. Yeah, um, Extreme Rex saying the bootleggers probably didn't know the US ones like Call of Dreams, Active Enterprises, Codemasters. Yeah, they probably didn't. But I imagine the Asian ones tended to be in contact. Probably a lot of people moving from developer to developer. Yes, yeah, so the NES did have some unlicensed Dizzy games. Um, I don't know if they were licensed on the Ma Mega Master System, but the, that Master System Dizzy game is still my favourite fantastic Dizzy. 
Yep, some of these games are still lost to time at the moment, no Johto. A good five or six of them. Um, yep, yeah, I already replied to that, really. Um, and Robert PL said hello again. I, I thought it was he said hello, but uh, it's always good. Always good to say hello. Yeah, the basketball one with kicking will be an interesting one. If that turns up, I'd definitely do a little stream for it. Uh, which one did you feel looked like, um, uh, looked like Bomb Jack, no Johto? F2 system games that all seem exactly the same? I wouldn't say that. I mean, F2 system have got um, Crosspang, which is a nice little game where you move things next to each other to make lines. They've got Mosaic, which is a unique tile swapping game. Uh, they got say those the um, jumping the pushy pushy thing. They got some good quality there, I think, with F two systems. Uh, Load Runner's good, yeah. Load Runner's a good fun game. Um, Dream World is a bit more simple. I would apply to Bob and um, Temano Pelaria said hello, David. Oh, hi, David. Hello to you too. Sorry for only just seeing that. Again, I miss a lot of these if I'm trying to concentrate on the. Concentrate on the games. Uh, lots of people put horizontal kids. Kit kids? Kits, not kids. People don't buy horizontal kids. That's like a pre plank kids. No, they don't do that. Um yeah, it is awkward, Costado. Uh, and Einhander, yeah, Einhander's your favourite. I say I need to play Einhander on stream. Um I think I I'd rather play the Africa game spiders, I think. Um, even though they're not great, and they're, they're at least they're not hiding things from you. Was Semicom known to Korean game fans? I imagine it would be. They're one of the Korean companies that put out original games in Korea, uh, no Johto, so I'd imagine they were quite popular there. And, uh, you know, be surprised if they weren't. And in Europe, too, a lot of the, Korea, a lot of the uh, Semicom boards have been found in Europe, so I think they got exported to Italy and the like. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Spaceship, T space turtle ship is a game I played on another stream, Extreme Wreck. They ripped off Puzzle Loop. They did look rip off Puzzle Loop, um, Carly. Shall we have a look at the the Puzzle Loop rip off? In fact, shall we have a look at Rolling Crush? It's another one on six eight zero twenty hardware. So yeah, let's have a look at the Puzzle Loop rip off. Uh. Now, the parent set of this is a trust license. Uh, it doesn't show Semicom copyright. You have to you only see Semicom when you complete the game. But uh, the clone set, which is an earlier version, does still show Semicom. So this was 1999. And lots of people were ripping off Puzzle Loop. It's why Mitchell got a little bit annoyed. Um, hey, t -Linus. Hey, Game Glitcher. Welcome as well. Um, good to see you. Yeah, there wasn't much Brazilian development we were aware of. There was the Tato do Brazil, who kind of made their own bootlegs of popular games. But yeah, this is um, this is Semicom's take on Puzzle Loop, and I think it's a pretty good one. Um, there do seem to be a few issues with the high score system. I've noticed, like not giving you the chance to enter your name and not displaying one of the mode high score tables ever. But um, Start it up. Some pre-rendered graphics. Shall we do panic mode or stage mode? Let's do stage mode. So, so again, this is the 68020 based hardware. So it's it's got a weaker sound system than some of the others, but um, not too bad. Either. I think they've done a good job of uh, ripping off Puzzle Loop here, actually. Of the Puzzle Loop clones I've played, I think this is one of the best playing ones. Yeah, I don't think they tried to sync it with the music, no, Johto. Why does the main character flicker? Um, I think it's just meant to. It's, it's, it's meant to be a special effect of sorts, I believe. Um, maybe not the most special of special effects. Unfortunately, I, this doesn't offer a spinner control option, to my knowledge. So it is a joystick-controlled puzzle loop type game, which may or may not be to your 
taste if you don't like joystick controls. Yeah, some of those tech toy games are quite interesting. The ones that aren't just hacks, although the hacks are still interesting too. I do need to do a proper Master System stream at some point. You know, not just a Sega stream, but actually look at the Master System and some of those games. Um, obviously the Brazilian ones aren't top quality, but uh, they're worth a look. So you see we've got a wavy, wobbly puzzle stage here. And but one thing I like about this is it quickly gets to mixing up the stages, you know, the actual layouts. You play too many of these puzzle loop clones that take forever to actually uh, mix up the stage designs. And you don't want that if you're playing that. You, you want mixed up stage designs. You want a bit of creativity. Also, the collisions are pretty good on this one. I feel like the balls are going where I'd expect them to go, and I've played other ones where I, I you know, I, I would have sworn I'd hit it in one place and it ended up in another place. Tech Twin needs its own stream. Possibly, possibly. Master System Movember. Say, <laughs> mm. uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing for um, next month. But, uh, yeah, I do like the Master System. I, I think I want to do a proper SG-1000 stream too, because when I was um, researching for the Sega stream I, do, I just did, I played a lot of SG-1000 games. And while a lot of them are just arcade ports, they're pretty good fun. They're simple. Obviously, you can see why Sega quickly replaced it with the, the Mark III the Master System, because it was never going to compete with the, the NES as it was. But uh, still some pretty good ports on there. Nope. Oh. That's not right. Ah, dear. Nope, nope, don't want that. Don't want the yellows. The yellows is too risky. <laughs> Gonna fit. Oh, ah, uh, what? Bad aiming. March is a verb, not a month. We're going with the whole August thing. Uh, I found a new meaning to August when I was in the August streams. Do some TNT. But, uh, yes, March can also be a verb. It's funny that when the uh, the months have other names that don't um, other meanings that don't immediately come to mind, either verbs or adjectives. So yeah, so this puzzle loop clones go, and I think I need to do a puzzle loop clone stream because again, puzzle loop clones is one of those things where I've emulated so many of them. That I really should do a stream dedicated to it, especially as apparently Zuma only exists because somebody played Puzzle Loop in Maine, which is kind of a funny story. Again, another different layout in Stage Six. So that's the uh, that's the stage mode. It does also have a panic mode. Where we can select easy, medium, hard. We can, we can go for this layout. But, you know, considering this is on a, a 68020 and the original puzzle loop did run on a, a more powerful SH2, I, I, again, I think it's pretty good. Although you've got puzzle loop clones on a Z80s, I can't play it on stream, but there's the, um, the Comad one, Funny Bubble, which I'd love to play on stream, but I, I'd have to black out most of the stream or find a way to hack. A lot of content out of the room, like all the backgrounds. Otherwise, YouTube will get very angry with me. So the panic mode is just the survival mode. It gets more difficult. You survive for as long as you can. Um, yeah, it's a bit like the endless mode in 
the columns type games. It's got more colours from the start, especially on hard and... Yeah, it's, it, this is a competent puzzle loop clone. If your arcade had this instead of a proper puzzle loop, I don't think you'd actually mind too much. I think you'd still enjoy it. that thing. <laughs> so it's got the extra features like that bullet there that was pushing things more quickly. So it's not even just a, you know, by the numbers, bare minimum features. It's got a bit to it. And again, you can tell you know, they enjoyed making this. The developers did know what they were doing. And that's, again, what I like about Semicom. You compare it to so many other Korean games where a lot of what's there just doesn't work. The Semicom stuff tends to. I mean, obviously we looked at Gaia, which wasn't great, but you could still tell beyond some of the problems, you know, there was a good game there. And, you know, you, you press the time. These were probably all completed very quickly. I don't imagine there were, you know, th these were probably real crunch time development, low budget, but you have to admire what was actually created. A little bit late to the market, but again, I'd probably learn to appreciate these. I'd rather play these than say a Comad game where they just hacked up somebody else's game and uh, broken a lot of stuff. Let's get rid of those ones. Got no purple stuff. <laughs> Missed. Missed again. I kind of like the slightly smaller graphics on this one too. It's got almost miniature balls and it's a slightly different look. It feels zoomed out compared to maybe the original. Obviously Mitchell upped the game quite a bit with Puzzle Loop 2 on the CPS hardware. Although I'm not too keen on the Halloween theme with that one. It kind of works but... Not as good as the original puzzle loop. But the gameplay's better. When bootlegs have protection, um it kind of makes sense though, because the bootleggers typically are coming from regions where lots of people are bootlegging games and they see the importance of protecting, otherwise their sales are just gonna you know, entirely destroyed by people bootlegging their bootleg. So, you know, they are more aware than anybody else of what the industry's like. It's a bit like, you know, IGS, they're, they're from Taiwan. Their arcade games are some of the more heavily protected ones we've seen. Because they know if they weren't, people would just bootleg them. They had to protect them. Um, so they did. <laughs> they spent, you know, some of them they clearly spent more money on the protection than the games. Um, you know, SNK didn't realise that until quite late on. <laughs> That uh, you know you're making a cartridge-based system, people are just going to bootleg it. Oh, well. Level thirteen. Yeah, Comad, the adult games, Jump Kids, we could play at some point, but not on the stream. There we go. Panic mode. I got to level thirty, but didn't score too highly. I'm sure that's a, a ripped sample from somewhere. But, uh, yeah, the one of these Zuma developers did say they played Puzzle Loop in Maine, thought it was some old, forgotten Japanese game, and just cloned it. Although, the time the f time frame doesn't make sense, because the year I emulated Puzzle Loop, it wasn't that old, and it's the same year that Zuma came out, pretty much. So, it was a very small window, but there is a quote... Apparently, from one of the Puzzle Loop guys, uh, one of the Zuma guys, saying, "Yeah, they they played Puzzle Loop in Mame and uh, cloned it." Although I personally, I would have thought that maybe they'd play have played um, Ballistics on the PlayStation instead, but apparently not. Um, so yeah, that was Rolling Crush, which is a pretty decent um, clone of Puzzle Loop. Um, so. Semicom had four 
Yes, four baseball games. Let's have a quick look at the first one of them. This is Magic Ball Fighting. This is from 1994. And as far as we know, this was only released in Korea. They've not even got their nice unicorn logo on this one. They've just got that uh, other South Semicon logo. Um, if you count playing it in MAME as pirating the game, then uh, yeah, no, Joto. But uh, yes, Magic Ball Fighting. One of the earlier Korean uh, Semicon games. I don't understand all the controls. We're not going to get very far in any of these baseball games, I'll tell you that much now. But we can coin it up. Nice high pitched whine there. So let's pick some dolphins. Um, MAME emulates the Neo Geo CD for, Men for Minius. The final burn from you guys gave us the code to emulate that. A long time now. I've even played the Neo CD version of Turf Masters on stream once. Strike two. And somebody's going to catch it because that's how these go. Unfortunately, a lot of arcade baseball games just aren't that much fun. Now I'm pitching. Uh, it's another one where, for some reason, SNK managed to produce baseball stars on the Neo Geo that just manages to make baseball fun in a similar way to Neo Turf Masters made golf fun. But a lot of the others, yeah, I, I don't get on with them. Yeah, this is a fairly plain one. There's not much in the way of fancy animations. But it's a Korean baseball game with Korean teams. And um, I guess that would have made it more popular in Korea than maybe the Japanese baseball games. Oh. <laughs> Safe. You don't have to be able to read Korean to understand the rules. It plays as you'd expect. There are far worse arcade baseball games. I've played a few of them. Ones that, you know, just want credits all the time. This, this is a bit credit hungry, but not as bad as some. And yeah. Did that come from Dink? Um, I can't remember who sent it me. It might have been IQ132. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually... I think it was originally the uh, Jan Klaassen's code. I've not even got a single... I've not even got to first base yet. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nope. No, oh, Dink, Dink. Uh, Dink from uh, the final project. Sometimes uh, drops in here. Yeah, in the UK there's cricket. I don't think there are any cricket arcade games. There's that cricket plug and play that I need to get um, working at some time, which is actually an interesting one because I think it was worked on by uh, the guy who did Head Over Heels, which is a, a very famous home computer game. I'm not aware of any cricket arcade games, at least not ones in Maine. I mean, we've even got a rugby game, we've got Scum Try on the uh, Data E system, but no, I can't remember any uh, actual cricket arcade games. Maybe there were some newer ones, but. A train. I played a lot of A train on the Amiga no Joto. That was one of my favourites. Apart from that book with building in the bullet train, where if there was a building in the way and the bullet train was trying to be built, it stopped the bullet train being built and the bullet train never resumed building. That was the most annoying book ever in A train. Yeah, Baseball Stars Part 1 on the Neo Geo is really good. I do prefer it as well over Part 2 DJ Jan's Classic. But no, A train on the Amiga was a really good game and had the construction set too. 
But um, there was that annoying bug. What's the final set do? Can't any more credits? You can pick Bunny Team. <laughs> Oh, it's a two-player mate. It's a two-player mode. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Go, throw. Go to base. Yeah, you get the idea. Korean baseball. There will be uh, several more of those between the other games we play on this stream. Uh, we've not played a fighter yet, have we? SD Fighters, this is the Korean version. This is one where there also might be an undumped export version. We don't know. Tyvano, a lot of the, Korea, the uh, Semicom games also identify the development team, and Tyvano was one of their teams. I think it said Tyvano the third team, didn't it? We had like Tyvano, Exit, uh, there's a few others too, but you see along the way. But this is a little fighting game with super deformed characters. It is just the three buttons. Presented kind of, you know, SNK style with the intro, all these characters crossing this way and that way and up and down and. You know, you, you can tell that, that what how, what they were influenced by here. It's actually kind of like the Neo Geo game Breakers with the textured background there as well. So maybe maybe that's some of the inspiration for the title screen style there. But um, is this anime the video game? Um, could be. Also, the Semicom like to use the fonts. You can see the same fonts and the same sound effects in many places, but uh, who we got? Let's go with uh, Wavy Hands, Jin. Seems to have a mirror as a type. Uh, th 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 there's a uh, uh, banner up there for Zit. This isn't very useful. This is, that's the only move I can do then. Uh, yeah, I'm going to die. Yes, it is a little bit like Pocket Fight, isn't it? Or oh, um, the Capcom one. The mini Street Fighter one. Okay, I don't like this character. Jonathan beat me quite easily. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's try somebody else. Let's go for a Misfito. Again, these are cute graphics, well animated. Well, I appear to be being beaten by... I'm pretty sure he's actually saying monkey wrench while he throws a monkey wrench. Oh dear. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to play against somebody else because... Let's go with Tanya. Get to a different stage at least. So has anybody ripped these sprites and put them in Mugen? There we go. Super Gem Fighters, yeah. So what was, did 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 SNK have something on the Neo Pocket that was similar? I thought they did. But yeah, the Capcom game was Pocket Fighters. The SNK game, I, did, I thought SNK had a similar thing. Maybe they did. Maybe I'm misremembering. Apparently that character is much worse than the other one I was fighting. Yeah, I mean, at least Semicom did have the FM sounds, uh, at least on these earlier ones. That, that's why the uh, 
It's quite a shame with those 68020 ones that just use samples. Here they've actually got some real sounds, although they do all sound kind of similar. Gamtech did not start with the letter S, unfortunately. But yeah, I had that cricket plug and play. I played it against a friend a few times before I sent it off to Sean to uh, extract the ROM. Unfortunately, you know, anything with motion control was that judges how hard you're swinging something and has you holding down buttons while you swing is kind of hard to represent in me. Not as difficult as the, uh, the ones that have got like cameras, but still pretty tricky. I've not found a good way to emulate the controls in it yet. I'm kind of hoping somebody else steps in it and helps emulate some of these plug and play controls. Because I'm not sure how to deal with a lot of them. You went to zip before and it's basic um, and a mega baby's fast food place. have a sequel as well, Cute Finders, which we may look at later. Terry, uh, welcome. I'm doing pretty well, thank you. I just thought I'd do a, a bit of a Korean Semicom game special today. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well too. It's always good to see you drop in. Uh, Santeri is the old back in the day uh, main work in progress and official main site to uh, maintain really, but I think mostly known for the uh, the main work in progress updates from back in the day, which were quite last site. Where every little change to main was uh, had a little write up with lots of pictures, so people could see what was going on with the project. And everybody really appreciated that back in the day, because it, it helped, you know, it helped keep uh, your regular users in touch with what was going on beyond the technical stuff. What game tech games or game tech games would I recommend? I don't know. Um, I can't think of them off the top of my head, unfortunately. No, this character is just overpowered compared to the other one, <laughs> uh, Bob. This character can just spam that move and usually win, at least the first round. The other character doesn't seem to have any good moves. Of course, I think I may, may have met my match now, because this character is more powerful. I do like a little knight with hair. I do really like the character design on this though. It might not be the best balance game in the world, but it's got it, yeah, it's, it's got style to it. It's got character. And again, for a, a low-budget fighting game, you can't really complain. Oh what? Well, I've lost. I've lost a Magic Girl. Mm, yeah, I played Magic Girl a bit. I got top of the high score table, you see, with Miss Blue Hair, Tanya, I believe her name was. So there we go. That was SD Fighters, which I kind of like. I think it's a pretty enjoyable fighting game. Well, yeah, it's not the best balance. Let me just have a look. Uh, no Johto says Semicom surely aren't a, isn't around anymore. I think they are. I think they're doing gambling games still, No Johto. Or oh, just non-arcade non stuff. I think they're doing something else Something else these days. They, they went into gambling games. And um, I, think, I, I think that Hardcore Gaming article actually mentions they're doing some um, office-type 
um, software, organization software and things like that. A lot of these companies just got out of the arcade business. Uh, they, often they went into gambling because it's more profitable. And um, Smedis likes a sequel where the character selected as Crane Machine. Yeah, we'll see that later, maybe, Smedis. Um, anything else I missed? I don't think I missed much. Uh, somebody mentioned another bootleg. Uh, I've scrolled it off the screen. Um, I don't know. Some of the IGS fighters will show you the list of li the moves you can do at the bottom of the screen, Mr. Midas. The Killing Blade's the worst for it. It will show you the moves you can do at the bottom of the screen, and there'll be like such a long line of moves. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to do that move. That move is ridiculous. Um... So I don't know. Maybe the, the SNK ones, a lot of them feel okay. I'm not saying they are okay, but uh, they, they feel okay. Let's go with uh, Cookie and BB. Again, as we mentioned before, there are two se two direct sequels to this and a third one, that's a third sequel that's not dumped. But this is the original Cookie and BB. And I think I played this on stream before. This one is Puzzle Bubble. But with squirrels. Pardon me? The music always sounds like it's slowing down, but it's not. Because the music has been doing by the Z80, um, it, it just sounds like that. It's kind of slightly uncomfortable. What am I doing? Let's ignore my terrible play. This is going to be the shortest credit of um, this game ever. Oh well. Yeah, it's jolly music like Puzzle Bubble. Yeah, that, that was a bad credit. Uh, I was trying to rush. the Puzzle Bobble tune. You can tell it's still an original composition. Yes, Metal Save is one I may look at at uh, another point. Um, Smedis, like, in a, in a little bit. I'm Toppy and Rappy. I don't, we've not done the single screen platforms yet, have we? Or any of them. But again, this is one. This one's on sort of Tumble Pop clone style hardware. And it's one that I extracted the protection data from. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, when I was extracting the protection for data from these, I wrote 68k code to run on the PCB that would print the content of the starter RAM on the screen, and then I'd enter that manually so that the game would boot, but I had to make sure the uh, the game didn't run the normal code too much while I was doing it, because some of them will, sometimes the, some of these, the MCU copies data into RAM, but then on startup, the 68K um, decrypts the data using the ROM checksum. So, you know, I, I usually end up hacking a different game that I knew ran on the same hardware, so it didn't touch that part of RAM, and then I copied the, the what was in RAM onto the screen, usually getting all the sprite limits wrong so it flickered too badly and was really annoying. It was a lot of work. I mean, you, you kind of take that type of thing for granted, but yeah, there was a lot of work went into getting things like this uh, working. I mean, these days, for some of them, the MCUs have been decapped, so they've only written MCU code, but back then that wasn't an option. Oh dear. So, you know, we had to come up with our own creative techniques for doing this, that's not good. Yeah, I'm going to die 
Okay. In terms of the, how the hardware looks, Smedis, they look completely different. A lot of the uh, Korean chips, Korean boards just use generic uh, parts that program to act like the customs on the original. Most of the time they replace the sound hardware. Um, but you can tell, that based on the addresses they write, how the hardware acts, they clearly took inspiration from, say in this case, Data East Tumble Pop hardware, and just re-implemented it with their own chips, you know, their own customs. Generic parts of the program. I mean, a lot of customs are just generic parts of the program to act like a manufacturer wants. And uh, I don't think they had access to the original designs because things like the row scroll, I think, are missing on the clone hardware. It's the same, the, I mean, the same with the 68020 hardware. It's a clone of the uh, Psycho hardware that Strikers runs on. Whereas this is a clone of Tumble Pop, but it's lacking some features or they don't work quite the same way. So you do have to take that into account. But luckily, you know, you're working with something like MAME, it's quite easy to customise the code, implement the little changes in your software, and make the games work. I mean, the, the first one I noticed with Semicom was the Hyper Pac-Man bootleg. Because all, all the Semicom games are protected. And most of the hardware rights are done from the, um, the code that's provided by the protection device. So having that Hyper Pac-Man bootleg that doesn't have any protection and seeing what that was trying to do where it was writing quickly made me realize it was a Snow Brothers clone and I was familiar with Snow Brothers from emulating the winter bubble which was a modified version of bootleg version of Snow Brothers that actually uses different video hardware but it meant it meant I was already familiar with Snow Brothers and so I quickly identified it's like this hyper Batman bootleg is basically Snow Brothers hardware and from there I had something that ran, and then I could write code to run on a Hyper Pac-Man board, and extract the real protection data, and then the real, the real Hyper Pac-Man run, and then I discovered that all these Semicom games kind of did the same thing. They all just copied RAM code into RAM. So, yeah, I went about making sure that every time a Semicom board turned up, I sent the person with the board a program that they could run the board to extract the data so that the game could run in main. Uh, Capcom had a lot more money. I mean, Capcom had you know an entirely custom version of the CPU on a lot of the, the games. Capcom a big budget. You know, a device program for a specific purpose can do that quite efficiently and cheaply. Yeah, Capcom didn't really like traditional MCUs. It's not like a Taito where most of their protections are off-the-shelf MCUs with protection bits. Um. Okay, yeah. Same with Cebu, their cop protection. That's a you know custom programmed FPGA type device. Which is why it's so annoying. It's not just something where you can dump the internal ROM and have it run. We can be sad. Um, the aiming's a little off, Bob. It's not as bad as some clones, but it's not perfect. No. But yeah, the original Cookie and BB. Uh, Primal Rage. Uh, yeah, it's a shame that. Uh, that was one that Morton was going to study before he passed away, unfortunately, to cancer. So I don't know what's going to happen with that one now. Um, but yeah, they did. Uh, Morton and Peter did Space Lords, but then unfortunately, let's say uh, uh, Morton's cancer got too bad and he couldn't continue work. But I do appreciate the work they did on um, Space Lords, the Gallico games like Thunderhoop 2, uh, Gunpei, Decathlete Protection. Very talented people, uh, Morton and uh, Peter, as a team. And, um, yeah, we, we did lose Morton to cancer, unfortunately. So I think if we hadn't, we'd probably have Primal Rage Perfect right now. But uh, these things happen. Yeah, Moto, maybe Moto Frenzy needs something else. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. Right. 
Let's rewind a bit then to one of the early games. Now, before Semicom was Semicom, there were some other games that were also um, published by Majin and sort of the same developers behind them and the same kind of style of protection. And this is another one where I had to extract the protection data from RAM. And this is Brixian. Uh, this was it credits Chael, who were also known as Jail. But this one's on an Arkanoid style hardware. This is cloned Arkanoid hardware. And um, it's uh, Puznik, really. I think we've played this on stream before. So, wake up with probably the easier ones. Now these bad looking towers that you can erase in the background, they do happen on the PCB. It's just they're so dark you can't really see them on an arcade screen too easily. It's a pick a piece and slide it along puzzle game. Yeah, free semicom, semicom really. I mean, even some of the actual semicom era games show different copyright, which is kind of funky. <laughs> I messed up, can't clear. I thought that might happen. I like the little um, temperature gauge in the background. Oh, I, no, I pressed the wrong button. I did not mean to restart the stage. Now, obviously this game, this star game has been cloned in many things. There's, there's versions of this in plug and play devices. It is a popular game to be cloning. Interestingly, there isn't um, a currently undumped arcade prototype version that had different graphics of um, Puznik, the original version of this. I mean, this isn't a bootleg, like, this is entirely its own code. But yeah, there was, there was a, a different version of Pusnik for the arcade that has not yet been dumped. Different girl pictures. Yeah, this is say it's 1993, but it's cloned Arkanoid hardware, really. So, if I move that, it's going to make a mess of that. So, I think I want to put that under that, don't I? Yeah, there we go. Just quite a little thinking at times. Has the average age of the main team remained the same? Um, it's an interesting question. Um, there's still a handful of the older developers involved, but since the um, non-arcade stuff was merged in, there were more younger developers um, with an interest in things, and that was kind of the idea. We was trying to sort of spread the net a bit wider to make sure new developers got involved because. We were, we were suffering a problem where the team was generally ageing and people were wanting to get on with their own lives. Sorry, should I pause this? Um, although, also a lot of people have now gone through that busier stage of their life and now coming back to develop, but again, it's still an ageing team. The problem is a lot of the newer stuff that people these days grew up with is much more difficult to emulate uh, and not as suitable for the main framework, you know, the, the faster processes. So it's a problem. I mean, I think there are still too many people who think that uh, main developers are just going to take care of everything rather than realising that they are potentially the main developers, the people who are going to have to develop and take the project forward. Um, sometimes they twig on. I mean, it happens a lot with things like Naomi or Model 2. It could be done. It could be done at full speed. But it's it's going to have it's going to involve people getting involved who aren't necessarily involved right now, and uh, realizing that you know the future isn't trying to beg me to send the model two emulator source code to them. It's finding a way to implement that 
in, in main. And to be fair, the Model 2 emulator source code is um, a little bit full of hacks and messy and you're better just starting again in main. I do like these puzzle games. There's lots of creative level designs. And this slightly randomizes the... the uh, I'm not surprised I timed out. This slightly randomizes the layouts, the, the um, levels, orders, so you're not playing the same game every time. Which is a nice feature. It means it's more replayable. Other than that, it is just, yeah, a straight up clone of Puznik, really. But it is the level layouts that really define these games. Yeah, it's a jolly little tune this has, isn't it? Let me get the final piece up. There we go. Of course, this may be preferable that over um, Puznik, because while you can turn the adult content off in Puznik, and, um, you know, there is a dip switch, and I don't think the US version has it. Or, no, I think the bootleg doesn't have it. I've messed this up. Can't do this. It's not going to tell me I can't do this, but I can't do this. This one does require more thought. No! <laughs> Messed up again. Game over. Yeah, Puznik, uh, if you like soccer ban and sliding puzzle games, Puznik um, is probably up your alley. As is that uh, when I played the Sunsoft game I played at the end of the Se Sega stream. That's kind of pushing tile sliding piece game. But yeah, Brixian is a you know a decent clone of Puznik. It's maybe you'd prefer the original, maybe you'd like this one, but it's it does a good job. Has Evie dropped by the chat yet? I haven't seen any messages from her, but I do sometimes miss them. She should have finished work by now, I think. If she's watching, hello, Evie. If she's not here yet, um, I'll say hello when I see her message. Anyway, we'll go with another shooter now, I think. Switching to vertical. Now, this one, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, plug-in options, auto-fire. I already configured Z as an auto-fire button on this one because you need it. Power Sucker Bam is kind of RPG-like. Right. So, drink for today. Where are the drinks for today? I picked up some Welch whiskey from um, Tesco for about £10 because it was on reduced to clear. So that is my drink for today. I don't know if there's an official Sucker Ban, Bob. I've not really followed the licensing of that one. So yeah, again, this has got pretty good presentation. It's got a little attract demo, a little animated thing in the attract. Um, this is based on a PC game, in fact, that uh, Semicom adapted for the arcades. So there you go. So the explosions are quite like Gaia that we looked at earlier. Um, let me just turn the volume down a bit. There we go. Yeah, some of them definitely do have the same levels, Bob. I don't know if it's an official set of levels. But, um, there you go. Your classic semicon font, though. I mean, your classic semicon whirly effects. 
I'm using Coke, uh, Mr. Midas. Maybe I should use lemonade, but I don't have any good lemonade. And most lemonade is kind of horrible with a Spartan in and stuff. And uh, the shelves are pretty bare here at the moment, unfortunately. Um, if you're in the UK, you'll understand that situation. So I had to buy what I could buy. So we'll pick Adonis. This is a good 420 years into the future. So I've got auto fire. Auto fire lets you use the laser weapon, otherwise you end up hitting the button so quickly you get very sore fingers. So this is one of those strange cases where an arcade game ended up influencing, a home game ended up influencing an arcade game. And um, as far as I know anyway, it started at home and um, ended up being an arcade. This is on the 68020 base hardware that we've looked at a few times already. The shells are bare because we don't have many dry HGV drivers because uh, we sent most of them out of the country because of with Brexit. It's like, yeah, it was you know it was one of those jobs that a lot of the uh, the, the people from Vesey York wanted to do. And they did a good job for low wages, and then we said, right, you're unskilled workers, you can't stay here, get out. And uh, now we've got a shortage of HG, HGV drivers, a shortage of things on shelves, a shortage of petrol, which is causing everybody to panic by petrol. And, uh, yeah, the country basically shot itself in the foot, to say the least. But, um, you know, and then people think they're going to get paid more now because there aren't people doing the work for cheap. Um, but I'm not sure that's going to last. <laughs> it's a mess, and obviously the prices are going up. Stuff that costs, you know, a pound some months ago is now like one pound fifty. The inflation is getting a bit silly. But yeah, we, we've made a mess of things here. To put it, put, put it politely. You know, all these people thinking, uh, oh, you know, these people are stealing our jobs. Let's get rid of them. Let's be independent. Let's... And they're not wanting to do the jobs. Yes, exactly, Mr. Midas 2K. Brexit. And a bit of Covid, but uh, mostly Brexit. Because um, obviously during Covid they couldn't get new drivers trained up, but um, the root cause is getting rid of the perfectly good drivers we had who were doing the work for, you know, uh, you know, decent pay. It, it wasn't low paid, it just wasn't as high paid as some people think they should be paid. And now those workers are gone. Uh, yeah. Anyway, don't want to get too political here, but yeah, we made a mess of things. And it's made a mess of work I wanted to do because of European contract laws, and yeah, it's, it's not great. But let's talk about the game. Again, this is probably one of... Um, Semicom's best shooters. Turn the volume down a bit, a bit too low, though. Especially you've got auto fire. But look, look at all the light wavy background effects they've got going on. They're using all the line scroll effects the hardware can do. Got loads of um, bullets on screen. Big effects. They don't have any real transparency, so the transparency is fake by flashing every other frame. But you know, again, this, this is clone Psycho hardware, really. It's 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 more or less the hardware Strikers 1945 runs on. But again, with weaker sound hardware. In fact, I think some of the um, bootleg Strikers boards may run on hardware produced by the same factory because it has the same extra unknown ROM, which is probably something to do with the Sprite uh, hardware. Maybe it's priority related. Oh dear. Indeed, Mr. Midas. Um, <laughs> my feelings are much the same. Um, we did have the chance to have somebody good in charge, but uh, yeah, our newspapers were not going to allow him to get into power, regardless. Nice colour change, colour cycling effects, too. 
overall, you know, it's not a perfect shooter. It keeps your score and continue and all sorts of other things that are generally considered sins in the shooting game community. But it's not a bad one either. You know, compared to some of that eight forces that I played on a, a previous stream, the setter stream, this is brilliant. Eight forces were just terrible. And that was a Tecmo game. Whereas this is a Semicom game from Korea. Let's bomb you a little bit. Bomb you a little bit more. Yeah, lots of stuff on screen, lots of effects going on. Some of these bosses do take a few too many hits. I don't know if there's any notable differences in the clone set. I, I've not really compared the two. But, um, yeah, it's a decent shooter, this one. Oh, hey, Heavey. Hey, Heavey. Welcome, welcome. I just I just said, have you sent a message yet? But it's good to know you're home. I hope work went, went all right. And I did start this one at 8, so I should be finishing at 11. So I should talk to you then. Um, a lot of games keep score between credits. I mean, it only started to not be in a, 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 a thing in shoot 'em ups after a certain period too. Um, I think a lot of players expect you to too. I have read before that player feedback for not keeping a score between credits was quite negative. It's like, well, I paid for that score. Why do I lose that score when I use another credit? Because outside of Japan, you know, people, I think, felt if they put the money in, they'd earn the score. Whereas in Japan, it's more considered the score is how good you are at the game. And if you're credit feeding, you're not very good at the game. Alright, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, if you nod off, I'll understand. Um, but yeah, th there's different attitudes on score and con if continuing should count, but it sort of became standardised with shoot 'em ups that you should lose your score. Or at least there should be some indication continued, maybe a different score table, maybe putting it, you know, using the last digit of the score to indicate you continued. So that's why some of them, if every time you continue, add one to the score. This isn't doing that either. Much like Gaia, this is, seems to increment the score in counts of 50, so basically the bottom digit is entirely pointless. They're not using it to show the number of continues, and they're not using it for your score either. Unless there's something somewhere in the game that scores you one point, but there probably isn't. Toppy and Rappy, what's it going? Yes, we'll probably have a look at Toppy and Rappy next, because we've not done a single screen platform yet. And so we can't have a few of those. Toppy and Rappy has Hyper Pac-Man as the last boss, but we won't be getting that far. The backgrounds look like something out of an early 2000s flash web game. Well, I believe this is a little earlier than that. This is from 1997. Um, so I, I will allow your message, Mr. Midas 2K. Um, it's not swearing. So yes, but yeah, this is based on a, um, a home Korean PC game, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not either, but you know, when you're reading up on these things, you tend to learn them. You learn about all the mechanics and all the secrets you'll never quite get to because you're not good at. But yeah. Spaceship. Anyway, next time I have to continue, I'll move on to Toppy and Rappy. I do like these spread shots like this. That's just such, what, you know. I, I, lo I love seeing shooters with the, the sh shots spreading out, all the bullets moving around. It's there's something about it that even if you're terrible at the game, it's just relaxing. You can die, you can credit feed, but it, it's it, it's watching the patterns. It's art in its own little way.
We yeah, definitely play this one with auto fire, otherwise it's too much too difficult to do this laser laser attack. And that is why there is the auto fire plugin in main. Anyway. Yeah, the, the effects are flashing rather than transparency, but um, they still look pretty good spenders. Try Dandelion and Burdock. Again, Mr. Midas, I, I have to find a Dandelion and Burdock that's not just full of, like, Aspartane and stuff. Uh, which is a problem these days. Because, uh, you know, I get worse worse headaches and hangovers and migraines from Aspartane than I do from the whiskey or any other drinks. Um, yeah. Barrier and Future Assault. Yeah, so the problem with the 68020 games is they do have a much weaker audio system. They're just two OKI 6295s. So I think Barion has it, got a single one, or is it a Dream World that's got a single one? Um, anyway, we'll go horizontal again. Uh, yeah, the Fentiman ones are pretty good, Mo. Um... And there's the Crawford Press rhubarb and things like that are pretty good. Crawford, something Press, uh, they're, they're good ones. And they do a good lemonade type one as well. And a ginger beer one that mixes quite well. Yeah, Semicom is sort of 75% polished. You, you notice the holes, things like the test modes that never quite align. I mean, some of the test modes are broken completely. Other ones... So, input test, yeah, that's fairly normal. Dip switch one settings, is this correct? It doesn't really list anything. Uh, apparently this has got a god mode option. So the test mode here apparently is the same as what's in main, but some of them are completely wrong, like from previous games they developed and uh, not updated. And sometimes you get people contributing fixes to main to make the test mode, the, the dip switch text in main match the test mode even though that's not uh, what the game does. Uh, yeah, Spartane tastes horrible and also gives me a really bad headache, so I have to avoid it, YouTube Visitor. Which is becoming increasingly difficult. It's toppy and rapping. I guess one of Semicom's attempts to create some sort of mascot. It is a single-screen platform, quite a basic one. It's a little... You can tell it's sort of related to an earlier game, Metal Saver, which is going to work out. But, um, 1996. Again, like all these, it's one where I extracted the protection data. So, you uh, web the things up and then you punch them. And then they spawn these balls that you can collect. Your movement is very slow, unfortunately. You can see you punch them. Fairly simple, but it, it works. I did notice the last boss has a bug where sometimes it will jump on platforms that don't exist and float in the air. But um, again, it's kind of that little bit of mission polish. Uh, Metal Saver we might play as well, obviously, guys. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, whilst Semicom do sometimes have maybe some... Graphic assets that look traced, for the most part, their, their content is original, which is far more than you can say for 90% of Korean games. Which, again, one reason I really like the content, the games. There are very few Korean manufacturers that did original games, at least in the 90s, and Semicon were one of them. Yeah, the concepts aren't too original, but the programming is. The art is, the sound is. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Midas. I'd rather just pay the extra for the drinks. Um, instead of having to pay far more for the drinks to get imported USA versions, you know, American versions of things. But there are, there, I mean, there are some companies now doing better drinks, although they're still about a, a pound a can rather than maybe 20p extra. But I'd still rather buy those. What I don't understand is like companies like uh, Coca-Cola Company. They sell the proper Coca-Cola here, but they don't sell you know, the proper variants here. 
you would have thought they'd realise that it, you know, they may as well sell them, otherwise people are just going to be giving their money to importers instead. Yeah, there's... I don't... Is it stolen or traced? A lot of it's... I think it's traced with Semicorm, more so than stolen. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money for anything. I can buy bullets. World ground. But you can just shoot them to death as well, which is probably safer a lot of the time. There's angry monkeys there that turn into more lions. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any real in-depth combo system. It's a fairly shallow game, this one. Also, Semicom stage clear theme is uh, something you will hear quite often. Same, same as the Hyper Pac-Man one. Those are angry monkeys. I mean, it does kill off things if you hit the web into them, but the web doesn't really jump around the screen in the same way, say, as um, Snow Brothers. And this is one that's running on a Snow Brothers clone hardware. With a different sound system, of course. The USA use corn syrup, but it's still not as bad as um, the stuff we get. Honestly, I take corn syrup over what they're putting in our drinks these days. Our choices are quite limited. My notification is going to work here. We will see. Last time they didn't, but this time they did. So thank you, YouTube visitor. Um, quite an anonymous name, but um, thank you for the twenty pounds through the super chat. Which I'm ignoring the message as requested, but thank you, and it's always appreciated. You know, it helps pay for things like the drinks on stream. It helps, you know pay for the odd thing I might see that I need to buy and get sent to Sean. I've still got a package over there that I need to send to Sean. Uh, to get a few things dumped now that it's easy to get to the post office. So it's always appreciated. Thank you, YouTube visitor. And uh, if you've got a specific request for a Semicom game you want to see next, then uh, drop it in the chat and I'll prioritise that one over the others. I'm sure importing Mexican coal is going to cost even more than Aussie guy, unfortunately. Um, yes, it would just be nice if they used, gave us the proper products again. You can't, I mean, you can't proper buy a proper vanilla Coke. You can get cherry Coke, thankfully. But even vanilla Coke, they only got the, um, the zero stuff. And it's a problem at festivals too. I went to the uh, the Download Festival a few years ago, and every single drink they had there was uh, the low sugar versions, the ones full of aspartame and the like. It was, it was literally easier to get illegal substances than it was to get a drink with proper sugar in it, which is kind of ridiculous. To it. There you go. Hmm. Link to all sorts of awful stuff. I don't know. It, do it doesn't make me immediately ill like the aspartame stuff does, though. At least, Mr. Midas. Uh, yeah, you could say this is a Bubble Bobble-esque game, no Johto. It doesn't have the depth of Bubble Bobble. It's got these funky um, shop sections too, where you can buy stuff with your points, I think. I don't uh, Yeah, I think, does this take off your actual points? Um, they introduced sugar tax, Bob, and um, rather than charge more for the drinks, basically every drink manufacturer just started put for them the sweeteners instead just so they didn't have to charge 10p extra. And then you get, like, say you get events like the festivals that are sponsored by Pepsi Max, and then the only drinks you can get are the ones full of sweeteners. It's kind of ridiculous. Especially when you can't take your own drinks in the arena. Okay, 
Let's have a strategy for killing Mr. Tiger here. Tiger looks kind of like he came straight out of SD Fighters. Got too close. This is tricky. You have too much health. They should be the time there. And the collision box. Let's just spam. So no, my point and money are separate, thankfully. I thought for a minute there they were connected. They are separate counters. You get the money from killing things, I think. Yes, I'm, I'm credit feeding the boss. I don't like games where the boss does have too much health, and this is one of those, unfortunately. Mm. I would happily pay the extra, or at least given the choice. It's the same with... Um, you know, you go to an expensive bar, you'll pay for an expensive cocktail, like uh, eight, nine pounds, and then all you can taste is sweeteners because they've used some cheap lemonade. It's terrible. No specific request then, um, YouTube visitor? I think we'll probably move on to Dream World after this one, otherwise. Yeah, Chael. We had a look at uh, Chael's Brixian earlier. We may also look at Final Tetris, which was um, has Jail as the copyright, which I think is just an alternate way of writing Chael. Nice underwater level here. Cut your conveyor belts. You know, traditional stuff for this type of genre. Rather than Bubble Bobble, I'd say this was more like a in low budget Tumble Bob. Although, you know, ironically, this is one of the ones that's on S Snow Brothers hardware rather than a Tumble Bob pop, pop, pop ripoff hardware. Um, Semicom used to have a website. I don't know if they still do. It used to be Semicom.com. But uh, it may be long gone. You know, back in the 90s it was there. Maybe Internet Archive will have it if it's not there anymore. Same with Comance. Comance used to have a website. Amazingly. <laughs> it's like, look at all our bootleg games that we're proud to represent on our website. It should have been semi.com, but it was semicom.com at the time. All right, um, <laughs> that's all right, YouTube visitor. I mean, like I say, just let me know at any point, and I'm, I'm happy to play games as long as they really fit the theme or can be connected in some way. Um, yeah, Toppy and Rappy, it is your traditional single screen platformer. Not got quite as much depth as some of the more popular ones, but it is better than, um, say, Toyland Adventure, which they did later on, which we may look at. But, uh, yeah, we'll have a look at another 68020 based one, which is a Dream World. This is the one that was also released as Load Quest, apparently, in Korea. It may be a year earlier, but we've not seen the version called Load Quest. Now, this one does have some obviously stolen sound effects. If you've ever played Worms, yes, this has uh, sound effects straight from Worms. Now, this is the first of the 68021 games I emulated for the Semicom ones. And um, it required a little bit of extra thinking because this one, rather than just putting the code directly in RAM, reads it through a port and then, you know, puts that in RAM with the CPU code. And it does also decrypt the code it 
copies using the checksum of the program ROM. So if you modify the program ROM, it doesn't decrypt properly and doesn't run and uh, yeah. Also, interestingly, I think there are a few emulation issues with the timing because some of the attract demos do not play properly at all. They just get stuck. Unless the hardware does that, I've not seen any videos. Yeah, load runner with jumping and some stages where you can actually soft lock yourself and make it impossible, unfortunately. Um, and random level order as well. That's obviously the puzzle bob there to go. I've got the only gem on that level, so I can escape. <laughs> now, you can, I think you can complete the levels two ways. You can escape or you can kill the enemies. But it's somewhat watered down load running, yeah. Away. Now the backgrounds on this are quite colourful and that's actually a bit of a trick because you see the backgrounds are made of two different background layers to give the illusion they've got more colours. So both background layers are being used to display one set of backgrounds and instead of you know 16 colours per tile they've effectively got 32 colours per tile. Which is a little bit cheeky. Uh, this is not how you complete this level. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I messed that up. Oh, yeah, one of these has got the uh, thing I need fairly. There we go. Sometimes I forget how to play this. There we go. I've cleared the enemies. Also, I can escape by running away. Um, so you've stolen the gem. But, you know, I can't actually kill you directly. Is this one of the levels you can soft lock it on? I can't remember. It might be. I'm doing a terrible job here. You see, I think this is the level you can soft lock it on. Oh no, no, you can. So this this does have proper ground. Sorry, some of them you can soft lock it on. This one you can't. This one you can trap on the ground. Sorry. Yeah, I I'm being blind and missing the um, <laughs> missing the obvious ground tower you can dig there. But I know Lord BBH did try and do a uh, one credit clear this and got. Um, oh, I can run away already. I've got the gems. If I can get out of there. Yeah, Lord BBH did try and do a one credit clear and uh, soft locked himself. There we go. I've got everything. I can run away. It's Load Runner. Yeah, he dropped the gem at the bottom. Uh, no Joe Toe. I just forgot that you could do that. I forgot there. Was, I literally forgot there was um, ground you could destroy there because you can't destroy the ones with rocks on. Although I can fire now. I got the fire. You think? I can't use it on you. Oh dear. Yeah, I have messed myself up now. Yeah, okay, don't do that. Okay, I keep jumping down. That You don't want to jump down there. That is a trap. If you jump down there, that is a trap. Don't do that. All that. In fact, how do I dispose of you? This might be one of those levels. Oh no, enough shots about you can't kill it. I don't know. But you, can, you see, the whole runaway thing is from worms. So yeah, you can take out those blocks. Well, I should have really got that first. Yeah, unfortunately, there are too many situations in this game where you can make it impossible for yourself. But I guess it's meant to be sort of puzzly. You're meant to think about what you're doing, not just be stupid. And um... Yeah. 
in kind of bad sound because it's the 68020 platform, which did not have a YM chip. Um, I think they, I think they probably just slipped through testing. I mean, it is very easy to happen on a low-budget game. Unfortunately, you design a puzzle, you don't realise the things people can do to break the puzzle. And yeah, there, there is a situation in the game where it does become impossible if you play it incorrectly, which is unfortunate. And. Um, Except they can't because they're up the ladder. <laughs> They've stolen my ladder and I need the ladder to get out of here. That's not good. Let me get a boss. I've got a witchy boss. Don't do that. So again, Load Runner doesn't really have bosses, this does. So I get, they're trying to be creative with this, trying to add elements into it that you wouldn't have usually found in Load Runner. Fortunately, I'm quite bad at it. it it's, I'm making it look more difficult than it is, to be fair. I'm trying to talk and play and rush things, and um, it's probably not the best way to be doing it. Avoiding a bomb. Um, if you'll excuse how bad I am, I'm chaining the enemies into each other when I don't even want to. Unfortunately, the only way you can attack the enemy is by using the enemies. Get back down here. You're just rude. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of games I make look harder than they are, and this is definitely one of those. There we go. You prefer sooner. Uh, I wouldn't agree, Aussie guy, but, um, you know... Opinions are obviously uh, subjective. Now this level does have sprite dropouts. I've checked that is not an emulation glitch. It literally has too many sprites for this level. Again, this is kind of bad testing, but yeah, the uh, the status bar. It's uh, you know it, it runs out of sprites. So, because every ladder is a sprite, and uh, yeah, the hardware can't draw that many sprites. Again, it's very easy for that type of thing to creep into a game. Um, the, the commercial games I've worked on myself, where we've uh, later found such issues, where we didn't realise there was a, a sprite limit, and somebody added a few more enemies to a level, and suddenly you exceed the sprite limit, and um, it's still shipped. These just take a certain hit. Don't do that. They have clearly thought about the problem of, of soft locking because the, uh, the weapon reappears if you die in this. It's just some cases they obviously missed the uh, missed it. So as it say, it's got lots of load runner elements, like you know the, the whole. Climbing bars, the whole burying enemies. It's just not quite Load Runner, which I guess is good if you want something more original. You just 
a plane load on a plane. blind. Now I can get out of here. I can try to. I can't jump there. I forget. Where's the exit? The exit is... Oh, the ladder up there. Of course it's up there. I am being silly. And I need the key. And I don't have the key anymore. Key's there. I'm going to open the door. And I get out of it! But, uh, yeah, I'd say, I wonder if they changed Load Quest to Dream World for legal reasons. Um, we've never seen a board with the Load Quest title, but again, that might be a case of it's only in Korea. But you get the idea, and say, so every time you play it, the level order is slightly different. There are more bosses, there's more content. If you avoid if you avoid the stage today, you can soft lock. You can probably one CC it. Unfortunately, say, there are one or two stages that do have bad design. But yeah. Say, uh, Dream World, it was my introduction to Semicom 68020 hardware. And so, again, it is one that I have fond memories of. I mean, I've got, I couldn't understand at first why my uh, thing to display the protection values on the screen didn't run until I realised it was checking in the whole ROM and decoding things differently if it wasn't correct. But, um, yeah. I quite like it. I'm not the biggest fan of Load Runner. I can appreciate Load Runner, but um, but um, wasn't um, Majin the um, publisher for these Aussie guys? So maybe some of the publisher um, role should have been testing them. Okay, let's play a game in a different genre. This is Carket Ball, 1996 game on Tumble Sock Pop Star Harbor. Where's our classic Semicom Unicorn? Card Pocket. Combines to form the word Carket. And it is a pool game. There's your classic semicolon sounds. Male or female, a bit male player. And this is a uh, pool game. You know, a bit like your pocket gal things. I think this is family friendly though. You can set you swerve and you follow and everything else. It's got these nice little cutscenes before every shot. Ball physics, uh, yeah. So you're allowed to miss a shot each time before you lose a life. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to miss more than one. You get a nice cut scene. And you see, I've missed two shots in a row, so I will lose a rest chance. Double miss. Unfortunately. There we go, got one in. A bit more like carpet. Or carpet. Don't do that. That will also cost you a, a rest chance. And the ball will be placed back on the spot. I don't understand the whole card element of this, to be quite honest. It is a little obtuse. Um, but I'm sure if you understand how the cards come into play as well, there is more to this game than meets the eye. Unfortunately, like most arcade pool games, the physics are kind of ropey. Two fives probably has a meaning. Oh, 
No! Side pocket is pocket gal without nakedness. As is uh, Minnesota Fats on the Genesis, Mr. Minus 2K, which is a good one if you like the actual side pocket gameplay and don't want the um, adult content. Oh no, indeed. How did that not go in? Again, this is one why I've extracted the protection data. I, I can say that. For the majority of these. Ah, Minjin's site is still up. That is interesting. I wasn't aware of that. There is one of these games that is actually credited to Minjin, which we'll put on shortly. I mean, I am just this bad at pool in real life. Um, even though these pockets are huge, I still can't manage to get it in them. There we go. Stage clear. Again, traditional semicon fonts. Get some bonuses based on cards, balls, balls in order probably. And I get a score. I get a cute little like super deformed character down there. I get a bonus stage. Where it's a case of hitting the balls while they're there into the pockets. So this is this is like just go bit bang panic like really. Controls are a bit oversensitive though. I got 12. There we go. I know the white ball isn't meant to go in the top centre pocket. So we've got a different number of balls in this round. That's exactly how I take shots. And <laughs> that was a terrible break. But what do you expect? I've never seen a pool table with uh, this kind of... Um, layout. Now your misses do re re reset between successful shots. So you see, I missed the first time, but now my miss count is back to zero because I did pot something. No, no. Hi Brazil, are you saying you're in Brazil then? If so, welcome, for, welcome from the UK to Brazil. It's always good to have an international audience here. Oh come on, that should have gone in. I, I say like I, I actually have some level of ability when it comes to pool. Um, yeah, there are better pool games. There are definitely better pool games. But uh, again, there are worse pool games too. If you play, I mean, the, the original Pocket Gal is a really bad game, and then there's the hacks of Pocket Gal that are even worse. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about this really. It's just the physics are really bad in it. Any snooker games? I don't know. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Again, snooker's maybe a bit too slow paced for an arcade game. I know the most uh, annoying thing for me um, on the PlayStation 3 was how the uh, all the pool games implemented a, a version of the rules that absolutely nobody I knew played. And they were sort of in the snooker, the Codemaster snooker games. It's like, Nobody and I wanted to play those games because they weren't the rules that anybody I knew played by. And unfortunately it didn't let you customise them in a meaningful way. 
which I think should be an essential part of any pool game, even though that would be extraordinarily complex. I believe on this one, if you do pot the nine ball, it does end the round. But yeah, the cutscenes are quite nice. I mean, they do get repetitive after a while. Oh, it doesn't end the round. I'm sure last time I did that, it ended the round, but uh, who knows. But yeah, you do get, so you get one shot where you're allowed to miss, and then the next shot you have to get it in, so you do basically get a shot where you can position things. As long as you couldn't actually get it in on the second shot. There we go. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. <laughs> then you try and show off like that and uh, it doesn't work. Lunar Pool by Compile. Is that the NES one, Manchul? where there's some hacks in those plug and plays with the worst music ever. There we go. I entirely meant that trick shot there. Not enough... Oh, enough power. See, I didn't actually clear all the balls, but I still got stage clear. So I don't know what the condition for clearing the stage is. Yeah, I played a bit of that one. It's not the worst one, is it, Man Shuffle? It's actually quite fun from what I know. I'm not even sure Pocket Gals 2 is official. Maybe it's 2 because they changed the gals or something else. Bonus stage. It's like a shoot 'em up. I don't think there are any pool themed shoot 'em ups, though. You know, you do have Caves disco themed Disco Fever on, Fever SOS, but I've never seen a pool themed shoot 'em up. Uh, yeah, there's lots of compile stuff the, uh, on those PC88 and stuff like that. I need to look. I need to look more at the PC88 and things like that because there are a lot of good games that never really get much coverage because it's a Japanese system. But that that the, the breaking mechanics in this are the least satisfying thing ever. But it's basically the same as say Pocket Gal. That has also incredibly unsatisfying mechanics when it comes to breaking large clusters of balls. Missed that one. I've got to somehow get something this shot. It's unlikely, but yeah. Go on, go on, go on. I think you get the idea, though. This is Carket Ball. It was um, Semicom's attempt to do a Pocket Gal Star game, but it's family friendly. There's no adult content, unless you consider like the the guy smoking to be adult content. But um, that's kind of normal in a lot of Korean games. Even some of the plug and plays are aimed at kids. Um, one of the guitar ones has backgrounds with the people smoking. It's like, yeah, parents probably wouldn't have liked that. Um, so, where do we go? I think we go Hyper Batman. In fact, I think we go the bootleg, because like I said, the bootleg is the one that uh, really got me started on emulating these um, Semicom games, because the bootleg has all the protection removed. Which means it just worked. The playing card sprites are from uh, from Windows Solitaire, uh, possibly. Arkanoid has shoot 'em up and pool mechanics. I guess it does kind of yeah, and and Dangum Fever on it is awesome. Yes, it, in fact, it's one of my favourite K games. I always forget is one of my favourite K games. Um, they should have done a sequel to it. Especially on the SH3 based hardware where they had all the fancy transparency effects. That would have made a really good disco game. But yeah, I think this 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 game is kind of Semicom's big break. Much to Namco's annoyance, because as I said before, this did beat the Namco Classic Collection to the market. And yet it offers that kind of modernised Pac-Man gameplay. And quite naughtily uses the uh, the uh, Pac-Man name. Get extra life, that. Get the extra life without losing life. 
get my sunglasses where I can see the secret passages. So we did a look at Twinkle earlier, and this is kind of a more primitive version of Twinkle. Got my laser helmet. I don't need the laser helmet at this stage. It is a little bit deja vu, isn't it? So on this one, yeah, you've got your secret passage over here, which you can go through, which means you can then shoot that, which means you can then shoot that, you can shoot that, and then because you shot that, you can shoot that, and shoot that, and shoot that. So again, this is the puzzle element of this game. And there are ways to get all the other power-ups just by shooting things, yeah. Let's say I want the power-up that's hidden. Oh, I've run out of laser shots now, so I can't, I can't get any more. But yeah, it's less advanced. There's another laser helmet down there, you see. So if I'd gone for that laser helmet there first, right where I just went past, I would have more time to get the other stuff. But yeah, it doesn't have the bouncing pellets. But it does have boss battles, so I'm going to at least get the boss battle in this. Oh. Right, I don't want to go there. Oh, I'm, I'm in trouble here. I'm in lots of trouble here. Oh no, I, I can I can hide down there. Look, I can hide down here. That's why having this uh, view thing power up is, is useful. Although, if the ghosts aren't on my side in their movements, I'm probably still... Yeah, I, I probably still can't do this. Come on, move out the way. Move out the way. Move. Okay. You can do it. You got the jump. It doesn't actually tell you it's jump in this version, but it's jump. So the time it's not quite as strict. That might be a dip switch thing, though. Um, I'm not sure all the super, all the uh, twinkle dip switches are known. But if, I, if I'd still got the laser helmet on this stage, I could have blasted those cherries and got those cherries. But I didn't because I used it on the previous stage. And go through there and get the. Uh, I've already got the uh, glasses. You can see it's very similar, but the bombs, the bombs, clear the hidden tiles. It's actually a good game. This is the, this is the thing you can't deny. This is a more fun Pac-Man game than anything Namco really put out at the time. Is that La Konami's laser scope? Maybe. Get the eggs. Bring this down here. I've still got the jump because I've not died yet. I died now. I say that just as I die. And now I've lost my laser scope, uh, my X laser, my X-ray vision. So I don't know where the uh, the secret passages are now. You do have to learn that. Again, it's very like Twinkle. We looked at Twinkle earlier. I've got, I can't jump anymore, so I'm running away. Run away. Needs that runaway sample for. No. no. I'm in trouble here. Oh dear. Yeah, th I think this is the, this is the game that made people pay attention to Semicom. So not not least uh, Namco. Now there is a secret passage in the stage because this may look impossible otherwise to avoid the ghosts, but it is not. It is if I go that far that way. So there we go. You see. Come on, ghosties. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I messed that up. I messed that up by doing it completely wrong. But yeah, you have to use the secret passage in that level to um, get around the ghosts. Now get some um, other coloured ghosts. I don't know if they're more aggressive, but they do just come in those two colours. I've not studied the game for AI differences. Again, let's say this is the bootleg set which really just has the uh, copy protection routine copied into ROM rather than being in RAM, which is a cheap way of doing it. Now, this isn't a laser helmet, this is just a regular helmet which allows me to take one hit, same as um, 
quickly. Yeah, you could do this on the Mega Drive probably quite easily. You might hit some sprite limits, I don't know, with some of the levels that got more ghosts and more moving things. But you can do a lot of them as tight, I don't know. It could probably, it would probably survive a Mega Drive um, translation. And it's 68k, so most of the code is there. But yeah, I don't think Semicom did any home stuff other than maybe those um, PC games we looked at, which were well, on Hardcore Gaming, which were more tail, but I don't think any of these... I don't think Hyper Pac-Man got a home port. Uh, Metal Saver did. But again, that's kind of pre-Semicom. We might look at Metal Saver shortly. But you get the idea. I don't need to play more of Hyper Pac-Man because we played plenty of Twinkle. The background for the stream here is different Hyper Pac-Man mazes put together with a few filters on, if you, you hadn't noticed that. Because, you know, it is um, their, their famous game, really. Um, right. Let's go for a game a bit different. Let's go for a, yeah. We've got half an hour of the stream left. If anybody else has joined, welcome. I say, welcome, Man Shovel. I did reply to your comment already. So, yeah, Final Tetris. What's the set name for Final Tetris? Final TTR. Okay. This one is credited to Jail. J, but it seems to be the same company as um, Chael. One of the early ones. This is another 68K based hey, one. And this is the one that is known for having um, the obviously not Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson in it. Who is called Mike. Clearly not Michael Jackson. It's also got a dog, if you want a dog with sunglasses on. But Mike from the USA will go up against Marco from France. It's got weird smooth movement from left and right as well. It's a very odd feeling Tetris game, and yeah, you do have a fast drop button that sort of smoothly fast drops stuff. But once it is fast dropping, you can't change the angle, so I don't know why it bothers to animate the fast drop. Uh, it's a Tetris game that's kind of... oh yeah, and um, I collected a power that has reversed my controls. It's one of those games with negative power-ups, because you know how popular negative power-ups are. There we go, back to normal. I'm going to get beat. And the controls are really slippery too, which didn't help it at all. Um, CPC ROM sets are 59 gig now. Uh, CPC ROM sets? Amstrad CPC, I don't think they're 59 gig. They probably still fit on a, a CD. Yeah, you can't. Th th this just has horrible controls. It really does. It might not come across in the stream, but ee, this, 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 this feels horrible to play. This is definitely one of the weaker games by the set of developers, I'm afraid. Michael Jackson impersonators aside. Oh, look, a bomb. That doesn't do anything. So I think you have to actually trigger it with the other button to explode things or something silly. Again, it's a badly designed power up. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had better things to say about Final Tetris, but... Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of Final Fantasy, but I acknowledge that Final Fantasy is a better game with Final in the title than Final Tetris. This could well have been the final game they made, but somehow it wasn't. Give me the piece I want. Not that piece. That piece is slightly better. I won anyway. Um, CHD. Does Amstrad CPC doesn't have CHDs. I, I'm, I'm confused. Why am I continuing? I thought I won. Did I not win? I'm going to be gin dog. Does that mean I have to drink the gin? 
You know, I, I do have some gin as well. I can I can drink the gin for gin dog. Some aviation gin. I thought I won that round. I might really not paying any attention. Oh yeah, the characters move left and right as you press the uh, directions too, so you know, they follow your piece. I, I don't know what's wrong with this game in general. It's, it's just a bad game. You know, as much as I like Semicom, Chale, Shale, whatever they want to call themselves, this is... Uh, this is a uh, regrettable quality Tetris game. Yeah, I don't get the bomb. I, I don't understand the bomb piece at all. It doesn't seem to work. Or I'm not using it properly, or something. Oh look, my portrait turned into a leg. Again, if I just drop the piece, it doesn't do anything. Is there a third button? Yeah, there's a third button. I think you have to use the actual third button to use the pieces. I'll try that shortly. Well, I can get rid of three pieces. Okay, I lost. Oh, you, you, you get the meter down as well, yeah. You lose if you don't clear enough lines. Yeah, this this is definitely a case of more stolen content as well, unfortunately. Uh, th say, I, this is one of their earlier games, and it's not good. Everybody's got to start somewhere. So, I've got a 10 ton thing. And again, I don't know how to use it. It is... It, I don't get it. it, it the, uh, the protection is emulated. So there's something I'm doing wrong, I think. Or there's a dip switch that's set wrong. Or I don't know. I'm sure I worked this out before. Uh, it's not the worst Tetris game I've ever played. That that um, accolade would go to the um, Payout Tetris, the UK gambling machine with Tetris theme. But, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. So this, this third button does nothing. The start button does nothing. The, if I drop the piece, it, yeah, to me this is broken. I don't know. Let's turn some dip switches on and try again. I'll play as chicken. Yeah, I don't know if this is just a broken game, because like I said, the protection only seems to copy stuff to RAM. But I can't work out how the powers work, or I'm being stupid here. Give this one last try. But I'm sure I faced this bomb before and worked it out eventually. Again, it only even if you've got multiple parts on a row, it only takes one of them. So many poor poor design decisions design decisions in this game. Keep playing it for a little bit. Question mark. I don't know what that did. You. Again, didn't seem to do anything. So I don't know. Maybe I need to revisit the emulation of this one and, and see what's going on. But Final Tetris is kind of bad. So either the emulation is broken, or I've forgotten how to play it, or the controls have been broken at some point, but uh, yeah, Final Tetris, 
to me it, it really doesn't work mm. let's look at something a bit different I may need to watch videos of Final Tetris being played and see if anybody worked it out. This is Chocky Chocky, which oddly does a unicorn animation, then goes to the old style Semicom logo. I have played this on stream before. This is actually a unique concept. Obviously it's Pang. And there is an undumped version of this with a Korean title screen too. That is one that is lost. But um, this is versus Pang. So, you know, you, you're actually fighting the person on the other side. And I don't think any official pan game has a versus mode. I mean, your, your playfield is kind of small because it's half the screen. But you have an energy bar, the opposition has an energy bar. The one of you that survives the longest wins. So if you want to, or you know, clears the the bubbles first. Also have a special attack which you can use. Uh, pause, pause the bubbles there. I won because the opp opponent died. There you go, you see. So yeah, I say I don't think any of the official pan games have a mode like this. So this is kind of Semicom taking a concept and doing their own version of it. Does it work? That is a matter of opinion. There we go, I won. Chocky Chocky. <laughs> a slightly remixed take on Semicom's wind, wind song. So next stage, different enemy, different background. But yes, this is the pan variant gameplay that Mitchell never officially made, to my knowledge. I won. We do need to look at BC's story next. We have looked at BC's story before, but I think BC's story is another one of those Semicom games that did actually get recognised a little bit. Not for its great use of English, that is for sure. Yes, uh, Mitchell don't like people copying their games, as we talked about with um, Puzzle Loop. I'm probably not in their best books, considering they say the whole story of um, PopCap copying Mames emulation of uh, Puzzle Loop for Zuma. But, uh, I do appreciate Mitchell's games. Uh, 
Uh, apparently, uh, I lost quite quickly. Yes, influence is being polite. Although I thought um, Cannonball was licensed. I will be looking at um, Bubble Buster slash Cannonball, the Spectrum version, if I do do that uh, Spectrum stream. It gets quite hard quite quickly this game. So yeah, I lost again. Continuing, but uh, there is a little bit of chalky chalky. Pardon me. I did promise a bit of metal saver. We have, oh, that's a bit loud. We have about 20 minutes of the stream left, so. Probably going to do some games quite quickly. Metal Saver, again, the female male selection, just like Toppy and Rappy. This did get a PC DOS port back in the day. Maybe it even originated on DOS, I'm not sure. But you can't fire in this one. You have melee attacks. So this kind of plays a bit more like um, Funky Jet, but without the uh, flying ability. But you've got your kick and you've got your punch and you've got your jump. Unfortunately, you can't jump down a platform, which is a slight problem. Yeah, it's a uh, single screen platform game with short range attacks. Yeah, Hudson did a few interesting games um, for the 8-bits. Driller Tanks was another one which had a different name also on the Spectrum. And obviously um, Stop the Express. You've got your downwards kick if you do that move. But yeah, this, this is very rough around the edges. Not altogether terrible, just very, very janky. Cannonball was first released for the MSX in 84. For some reason I thought it was 83, but maybe it was 84, I don't know. It, it was early anyway. And uh, yeah, for an early Spectrum title, um, I mean, um, Bubble Buster on the Spectrum was my first encounter, of, you know, my first experience with any kind of pang type game. Yeah, the controls here feel off is the main issue with this game. Sometimes it seems to continue in directions you're no longer pressing and uh, it could do with some work. That, that, especially on these conveyor belts. Pomping world, Aussie guy, I think. Pomping world, not plumbing world. Uh, you're getting it confused with Plum Pop, the Taito game. Okay, you can jump down with platforms with jumping down. Okay, just not the other ones down. That might help. But yeah, this is very awkward. Yeah, this was first amusement rather than semicom as they were called semicom. Um, I'll 
play until I um, end up losing the credit on this one because we are nearing the end of the stream and there are a few more games I would like to look at at least briefly before we do bring a close to things but again like most of them this is where I extracted the protection data and uh, that's why it runs in May. But it's it, the controls are kind of stiff too. If you, if you probably can't see that just watching on stream. It takes a little while to respond to anything you press, which makes it quite difficult. There's a very noticeable delay in your controls. So I don't know what triggers the special moves like that. It's not it doesn't seem to be Street Fighter inputs, it's just sometimes it happens. I can't jump down here for no obvious reason, so it's slightly inconsistent. In some levels you can jump down, in other levels you can't. It does have a very PC DOS feel to it, rather than arcade game quality. I think those schools kill you if you pick them up too, so avoid the schools even though they look like power-ups. Yeah, it's strange the original Pang was called Pomping World on the arcade, and then that title got dropped entirely. It's a bit of a, a Puckman situation, I think. Also, I think, is it uh, Pang 3 that's got a hidden title that's never used? I mean, I know the PlayStation version was um, called something else. I think even the arcade Pang 3 has a hidden title that never gets used related to Buster Brothers. So I don't know why they felt the need to rename it all over the place. You feel Semicon went bankrupt. Did they go bankrupt or did they just start doing other things crossover? Here we have a little spidery boss. Please. Not very happy with kicking. So again, my controls just seem to stick going in the wrong direction there, which happens in this game. And this is where it looks a bit like Toppy and Rappy with the spider webs, because in Toppy and Rappy you, you you know you're firing spider webs at people. In this boss, the spider webs are getting fired at you. So I think there's a clear connection between the two games. But um, there we go. Game over. So, I don't know if we're going to heaven, but uh, heaven is over there. So if we load up Wonder League Star, this is one of the few that's actually credited to Majin. This is another baseball game. This is the second Semicon baseball game. You get a full full game for six credits, as it says. You've got this little cute penguin running around. We speed through the track mode. There you go. These cute animations of penguin, not animations, but screens. But uh, there you go. You see those uh, goatsy hands and uh, rocket going oh, off and all sorts of things. But this one actually says 1995 Minjin or Majin rather than Semicom, which is interesting. I don't know if there are versions out there with a Semicom copyright. But this version actually shows the publisher and the publisher's logo, which is kind of uncommon. You don't see that in any other game as far as I know. But um, from what I'm told, they were the publisher for all of these games. But in this case, for some reason, it says their name instead of Semicon. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get to Mr. Kicker tonight because we are very low on time. Because there are more Semicon games to cover than I realised for three hours. This one's much trickier too. Also, look at Mr. Baseball Head down there. So this moves the thing after it's... <laughs> I've not hit a shot yet. Yeah, they stopped making games in, in 2005. I hit a shot! I hit a... I might even get somewhere. I'm not going to actually get to the base though. Run back, run back. 
I don't know if that worked or not. Now I'm pitching. Well, yeah, there were four Semicon baseball games. This is the second of them. This was followed by Wonder League Star 96, which was followed by one with an entirely Korean title, which I have played before. But as you can see, these were meant for Korea. There's, there's no localization at all in them. animations which would become a staple in the series really. Go out to My fielding could use some practice. Unfortunately, your fielders are quite slow. But you get the idea. I'm not going to play any of that. It's just a baseball game. You've seen baseball games. Uh, Semicom also ventured into. Arkanoid clones with Puzzle Break. And again, we'll cover this one very briefly because we are near the end of the stream and I can't really go over three hours tonight. So Puzzle Break. It's got a little bit in common with uh, the data is sort of uh, lop titles as well. You know, your ghost lops, your grap lops and everything else where you're knocking bits off to make everything else fall down. Um, also a little bit similar to Semicom's own Hatch Catch, which was a fun one. Which again, we've not had time to show. We may have to do a uh, part two of Semicom, in fact, at some point. I don't know when. Clearly we're not going to get through all the significant Semicom games today. So you've got your two buttons, one, one flips right, one flips left. So again, it is doing something more than your standard um, game in this genre. And then you've got the uh, the, the odd bootleg of uh, Plum Pop, the Korean one, which was Jumping Pop, wasn't it? Where I've never quite got the colour emulation correct for some reason, it doesn't really make sense. Not the same Jumping Pop as the... Uh, Later Korean, other Korean game, which was a tumble pop, straight up clone. But yeah, as, as sort of Arkanoid variants go, this one's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like Cluster Bus, a Grap Lop, uh, Ghost Lop, and that lot. The, the game Data East appeared to try and release many times on different systems including the PC Engine and um, most of the releases didn't end up being releases and seemed to be prototypes or unfinished games. But, uh, I don't think it was a bad concept. I really enjoyed Ghost Lop. In fact Ghost Lop is kind of one of my favourite Neo Geo games even though apparently it was never released. But, uh, there you go. The bonus stage, wasn't it? There are two sets of this dumped. I don't know what the difference are. Yeah, that was a bonus stage, so it didn't matter that I died. Fortunately, we've not done um, Wife and Wings either. But, um, yeah, we're almost out of time on this one. When my credit is over, the game here is over. Wide. Oh dear. Still have a life left. Hey Alcor 2 b welcome to the stream. You are arriving near the end of the stream, so if you're not bothered about the live chat, you may want to 
rewind and catch up a little bit, but thank you for joining. It's always nice to see new names in here. I hope you're doing well. Uh, we have a good community here. We've got people like Aussie Guy dropping random facts about the games, doing some good research. We've got uh, Bob who sometimes drops a random fact. We don't have a cow tonight. We've usually got somebody called Cow who a really nice final lap. Uh, but yeah, we've got a lot of regulars here. A lot of good people in the, the chat. So, I hope you can make yourself feel at home. And obviously today we've been covering Korean arcade games with Semicom. You're from France. Again, a, a big international audience here. Um, there aren't that many French arcade games. I mean, you've got um, you've got Bagman, of course. Um, that's a French one. So yeah, I might play Bagman on the stream at some point in the future. Apparently, I'm doing better than I expected to do on this. Oh, not on the bonus station. But yeah, I think. Um, I don't think this is as good as um, Ghost Lop on the Neo Geo, but in terms of that Data East concept that Data East never quite got right, I actually think Semicom did a really good job here. However, I think that might be me, might me, might be me done for. Oh no, I, can't. I have another life left. You love your they just use a bit of MAME then. Oh, um, I think that is me done for this time. Yeah, continue. I won't be continuing because I want to move on to one last game from Semicom. That's a game over sound. So, we have looked at this one before. But this is Semicom's BC Story. Yeah, people end up buying the Mitchell IP, didn't they? Because I think it was going around a while. People wanted to see what they could re-release and what they couldn't. So this is the story that makes no sense. Give it a read for yourself. Honestly... It's something about electing important people when a volcano goes off. It makes no sense. The The English is completely broken on this. I mean, there is a Semicom game with possibly worst English. Wor worst English? Worst English. And that is the cool mini game collection. Unfortunately, we're already almost on three hour mark, so I'm not going to be able to cover that today. But yeah, this is uh, Semicom's attempt at doing a track and field type game, which is why I've gone to this one, because we've not really done anything like that. So, we look a nice morph effect there. Could you get more 90s than a morph effect? I'm going to be 9, 9, 9. So where shall we go? Shall we go... Let's go with running. We get to try one time. Circle backward too quickly. I hope this is this configured on the pad. If it is, I might stand a chance. Yeah, the layout line is a little bit off, but I think that's just how it is. There we go. Circle on the pad quickly. Yeah, I'm shaking the camera, sorry. Apparently I lost, but I still qualified. Hey May Mania, welcome. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, anybody arriving now is arriving on the last game, but it's still good to see you. I remember you being in the last chat. So this is a left-right one, left, last stream. It's good to see you again, but uh, again, if you want to see more of the games, you should probably go and catch up. This is a proper joystick waggler, track and field style game, and I won. I mean, I like the style of this one, Aussie guy. I have to say, 
I like the caveman style. I always like good old games with a good theme to them. And while maybe track and field and potatoes and docky and uh, the Guinness strength and skill play better, I like the style this one has. I think Semicom did a really good job of theming this one. So what we're doing this time, another left right one, okay. With a bit of jumping. It's a triple jump basically. Valley surfing. Yeah, it's the caveman games. It's a bit like James Pond the Aquatic Games with the caveman. press the button in time and I faltered. So this is kind of tricky. You have to press it at exactly the right time otherwise you would just fault on this one. So unfortunately I lost that event. I'll continue. I'll continue just this once. Do a funky dance when I continue. Uh, this is a smash egg one, isn't it? Yeah. So again, it's left, right, left, right, Yuck. and button. Yuck. Yuck. Make full power, then break. Yuck. Yuck. Yeah, I, I do Yuck. like this one. I mean, the sports can go. Again, none of these Semicom games left the arcade either, which is kind of one of the interesting things about them. So, while the concepts are familiar, the exact games, unless you play them in MAME or in the oh, I, I, yeah, you do two of them, you do that, and, and I still qualified, but I, uh, since I did it too early, I hurt my foot. Uh, okay, this is the slightly awkward event, I believe. Is it? Oh no, this is this isn't so bad. This is the hammer the button. Press catch, and then hammer the button. <laughs> yeah, clicky, 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 or pad clicky, 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 we'll see. Auto fire is handy. Oh, that's even harder. <laughs> Keyboard clicky is easier than pad clicky. Yeah, Flint Flintstones would have fit into this theme really well. Obviously, um, Semicon weren't going to pay the licensing for Flintstones. Anyway, we didn't do the uh, Get White Power game, which is, uh, you know, kind of inappropriate, um, which is the climbing one on this, but that's just a case of bad translation, unfortunately. But yeah, Tyranno did some of the uh, better Semicon games, 13. But we will close that there. And we will end the stream there when I find my mouse pointer and go over to the big video. So that has been a selection of Semicom games. There are many more Semicom games we didn't get to cover. We didn't get to cover Cute Fighters, the sequel. We didn't get to cover the 3-in-1, which has got the Hyper Pac-Man sequel. We didn't get to cover their matching tile game. Uh, we didn't get to cover Hatch Catch. Or the Day Quiz Go Go, or the More More Plus mini game collections. Uh, we didn't even get to cover the four in one bootleg machine, which kind of seems to have a Semicom game in it, even though it was never a Semicom official game. We didn't get to do Mr. Kicker, which is one of my favourites. Uh, but we did a fair selection of Semicom games. Uh, maybe I'll do a sort of mini stream follow up. But again, it's it's been a, it's been a good for me. I've, I've enjoyed showing these games off because, as I said, I spent a lot of time getting all these emulated. Final Tetris still annoys me because it feels broken, but I don't know if that's just how the game is. But yeah, um, 
Semicom, to me, one of the better Korean developers. They're ones that put real effort into their games. Some of them are a little bit rushed out at the last minute, you can tell. But they're up there. There aren't many Korean companies that weren't just hacking up other games. So you had Semicom doing the original ones. You had uh, Suna Sune doing the original ones. Um, and then later on, you had companies like Eola who would then go on to work, to work with SNK. But early days... Um, a lot of them were just copying other people, you know, bootlegging other people's games and changing the graphics, whereas Semicom did their own thing. And Semicom games also, they're, they're family-friendly. Whereas you take Comad, who are hacking up games and adding adult content, everything from Semicom, as far as I know, is safe to stream, which is good if I'm trying to do streams. So, yeah, it's good to see everybody, and thank you for dropping by Manchul. I know you're usually on Zypho's Amstreams. Always good to see you here too, though, so, you know, I hope you're doing well. And, obviously, Aussie guy Bob, main mainly who just joined... Aussie guy, but Aussie guy's the one who obviously comes up with uh, obviously often comes up with many facts. We've got crossover incorporated. We had Wolfaz here. I think I forgot to say hi to Wolfaz, but Wolfaz is another regular. We say it's a, it's a really good community here, and I'm really happy people tune in whenever I do streams. It it, it makes the difference. If I was talking to myself, it would be it, it wouldn't be the same. And that, when I stream on Twitch, that tends to happen. Um, so anyway. Uh, I don't think we're going to do Comad games somehow because YouTube would kick up a fuss. But anyway, yes. Uh, thank you, Bob, too. Um, and yeah. Like I said, there's been a lot of people. I can't thank everybody. I do have to end the stream now. But uh, thank you to a YouTube visitor who... Um, fairly anonymous for the £20 donation earlier. Again, the, the donations always help to keep this type of thing going. But I'll try and do... I, I might do a roundup Korean stream at some time because I did want to do a, a Sunday stream, Sooner stream... Uh, but maybe there's not, not quite enough games there to do. We'll see. But anyway, take care, everybody. And if you're in my time zone, good night. If you're in the US, say, like, um, Manchurville, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day uh, because everybody's in different time zones. Aussie guys, I'm guessing, is in Australia, which is in another time zone entirely. So I hopefully catch you on the next one. And thank you, Alpha, as well. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, everybody. And with that, I will say good night, and I will hopefully catch you on the next one.